welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Today, my guest, Mary Crea, lead singer of uh, what remains? Yeah, the remains. The remains. Yes. And that's Kay Caruso and uh, Michael Masonette and James Speary. We just had Michael Masonette on the podcast. No, he didn't even call me. He's anything. a good Mike. friend of mine. Yeah. Mike's all right. Yeah, <laughs> he's an amazing artist and a fantastic drummer. Yeah, he can play anything. That's why I love him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's incredible. Now, he, he'll always show up with the, uh, the entire song written out, like per song. When he comes and does, like when he jams Primus with me anyways. He's always got the whole thing written note for note. Like when he shows up, he's fucking bringing it. <laughs> well, I do the same thing though. So I, uh, I always uh, have all the lyrics out and I map them out and breaths and weights to measures and blah, blah, blah. And then I like uh, print it out and then I stick it back on my tablet. So I can just roll it. Nice. So it's pretty, it's pretty fun. So how have you been? I've been, uh, actually I've been doing really good. I've been, uh, just trying to take advantage of the time and, uh, like work out and meditate every day. And we've been tr transitioning to vegetarian. So it is a big old health kick over here. Alrighty. And we love it. Well, I will make sure I buy you some asparagus <laughs> I and love send asparagus. it over. And I, I should have brought it. You should tell me. <laughs> I should just brought you to here. Yeah. No asparagus. No. Oh, it's delicious. No, no. No, yeah. No, I like Brussels sprouts. Do you? I like them too. I think they're sort of fun. They're little bitty cabbage balls. It's fun in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can dig on some Brussels sprouts. I'll eat a whole bowl of Brussels sprouts. So. Just put some S and P on them bad boys. With some turkey or roast beef. <laughs> like, yeah, you know. Like, that works too. Yeah, I can't eat them by himself. No. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I'd have a problem with it. I didn't I didn't at all. How long have you been doing it? Uh we've been doing it for like three weeks now. Something like that. Just, you wow. know, mostly eating vegetables so all the time. Feel? Fantastic. Really? It doesn't weigh you down when you're done. You know, like if I eat meat or I eat, you know, a bunch of that, you know, processed food or anything like that, it always feels like, okay, I just ate something. But with like the vegetables, it's just like, okay, I'm full. Yeah. And I continue functioning. And it's, it's fantastic. It's like no. pure clean energy. No. I was like a little, like six ounces of steak before I go on stage. It's, oh, yeah? It doesn't, yeah, I've lean meat, don't eat any cheese, any vegetables, anything's going to bloat you. Yeah. And uh, so I'll eat that right before I go on stage and get that protein energy. And uh, it's uh, it's worked for me for many, many years. Nice. Yes. I too, like that. Too many. Too many. <laughs> too many. So you do that every time you go sing? You you, you have the six ounces of uh, yes, lean I, steak? I try to. It depends on where I'm at. But okay. If I can swing by somewhere and get a nice piece. Um, when I lived in uh, St. Louis, I worked at uh, or played at Mississippi Nights all the time. And uh, great venue. I mean, back in the 80s, it was like everybody was there. I mean, King Diamond, Oingo Boingo, The Police, Jane's Addiction, all these people played there, you know. And so I was a house band that played there every weekend. And uh, right next door, there was a little place there, and I would walk in there at like 6 o'clock, get my little six ounces of steak, and then walk back, <laughs> and then do my thing. And back then, um, or not back then, but uh, most bands played four sets a night. You know, we started at eight, as opposed to here when we get 45 minutes. <laughs> um, so it, it was a long night. So that protein, you know, plus I think I started drinking. I had just started drinking then. Yeah. So, and I would have like three drinks. I think it cost a whole $6. Back then it was like $2 to drink for vodka at tonic. So it was very nice. <laughs> like I always say other prices now. But yeah, the, um, the protein... You need that energy if you don't eat anything at all, and then you have to sing because jumping around and it's it's you know I'm not sitting down playing drums like Mike Masonette. No. Oh I God. I'm jumping around. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's gonna hate me for that. Yeah. I love like you, drummers Mike. don't drummers don't burn any don't calories. Do no. They just sit there on their throne. <laughs> yeah. Les, love you too. Um, uh, but yeah, so it's a it's it's a part of the regimen that and a lot of iced tea. Or warm tea, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's see. I've been getting into the tea as well. I cut the... What's your favorite tea? I don't really have one right now. I like berry oh. teas. Like the caffeine-free berry teas are delicious. You Blueberry. It's my tea. jam right now. Just plain black tea yeah. is just awesome. Cold, no sugar, no additives. And then in the morning, a little Earl Grey with a little sugar and a little milk. Oh, yeah. It's lovely. Lovely. See, I gotta get um, I gotta get a morning tea going. Yeah. Cause I got like some green tea and some matcha and stuff Earl like Gray. that. Earl Grey. Earl Grey sounds it's like, good. It's like uh, it's <gasps> I got that from my uh, 
my ex from Ireland, and he used to, I used to bake real bread in the morning, and he'd have toast, and we'd have Earl Grey, and look outside and watch the birds chirp, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's gone now. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's gone. Uh, ah, the 80s. The 80s. It was a blur for me. I was born in the friggin' 80s. Oh. Well, I was uh, thinking about it on the way over here, and I was like, let's see, how could I list my life? Let's see. Uh, we'll start in the 80s. College. Band. Lots of drugs. Nice. Um... <laughs> Because it was the 80s. It was new. This is the time so, to do it, too, yes. in college. You know, Oingo Boingo, green hair, white snake, fabulous. Mm -hmm. Then married, 90s, divorced, Vegas, or Vegas divorce. Then 90s, lots of drugs, huge blur. I don't remember <laughs> half of what I did here. Huge. Club rock, um, uh, shark club. Those were the clubs that they were fun. Hmm. Then it was uh, Louis Prima, problem child, um, Jimmy Van Zandt from Skinnerd, uh, James Brown, the bands, these are bands I played with, and then my original bands, and then comes now, new married, um, still married, still married, still rocking though, um, having like the best time. I think I'm having more fun now than I had in the 80s playing. Yeah? Yeah, I, yeah, I think my, my voice is better. Um, I'm not as crazy, <laughs> don't get me wrong, still crazy, uh -huh. but not as crazy as, as I was then. But I'm having, you know, the different people that are having me sing for them, uh, working with Bob Ferrari at his studio. Oh, and I, yeah, I've just made acquaintance with Bob. Bob is amazing. He's, uh, I think he recorded my first, he's recorded my first album and has pretty much recorded everything I've done since except for one band. Even the one I'm working on uh, with the cat in Seattle. And I fly there for pre-production. He sends the music. I, I write the lyrics and melodies. It's very dark, trancey stuff. Um, then he flies here, and we always record the vocals with Bob Ferrari. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, it's fun. Bob is an amazing engineer, producer, just uh, quality cat is what I say, quality cat. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, his he's, studio's really nice. I was just is over it there. Though? Yeah. Yes, I gave him the David Bowie book. Oh, there. did you? Yes, I did. And I have a skull for him that I keep forgetting to put over there. But I love that piano he has too. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah. Yeah. The whole place is just you know, it's great ambiance for recording. Yeah, you know? big time. So I use him for anything that I have to do that's my personal, and then I tell people, anybody that wants to do anything, that they should. Not to say anything against other studio cats, but him I know, and he knows my voice. I mean, whenever you go in the studio and the microphones, and there's like so many of them, and I have a very, a little bit of a different voice, because I can sing high, but my speaking and voice is really low. Um, and he can get the right timbre, and he has no holds bar, you know, you do a take and you think it was fabulous. And then he'll go, that was great. Now sing it like you care. And I'm ah. like, I mean, I've stormed out before and I'm smoking a cigarette and he comes out, he goes, you know, you can do better. I'm like, yes, I can. <laughs> but he knows me. I mean, knows me that well. I, he doesn't just let me record because some people, you know, they say record. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And you're like, you sure you don't want me to do Oh, no, no, it's fine. Nah, he won't let me get away with anything. So he's made me a better singer. Well, you have an extremely powerful voice, and anybody that's heard you sing knows that you can deliver some serious notes. So, I'm a little loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and, and it's crazy, because I never, I mean, I studied opera, and that was, was going to be my bag until I discovered rock. I mean, I knew rock and roll, and I was digging it, and Bowie, and Queen, and all that, but I never did it live that way. You know, we just did the school stuff in church and all that Catholic. I said to be a nun, and now I have 666 on my arm. Ooh. Yeah. My mother thinks I'm going to hell. You got the deicide version. Yes. Fucking I got, metal. I know. And then I got vampire there, Japanese. Oh, is that what that says, vampire? Yeah. I love it. Kana Kana. So. Uh, yeah, shut, we were oh, just shut, watching oh, Vampire oh. Night. Yeah. <laughs> Look, um, got me into watching uh, Vampire Night recently. So thank you very much for that. The uh, anime vampire soap opera that it is. It it's is, but it's fun though. Oh yeah. And it's it's all of them are so. I know we're just we just jumped to another topic. It's okay. Um, all of them are, they all say they're in high school, yeah. but they're all like adults, you know? I mean, how many high school kids are actually slashing through monsters and going through time? Right. And their voices are adult, so that is something that I would love to do voiceovers for Japanese anime. I think it would be so much fun, <laughs> as long as I don't have to have that squeaky girl voice. Yeah. You know? Um, I was watching one that you have to start watching. 
Maybe. Um, it's High School DxD. High School DxD? Yes. And uh, it's uh, about people that die, and then um, the devil comes and says, hey, you know, we'll bring you back to life, but you got to do stuff for us and get contracts for us. But, they're, oh, all, but they're in high school. Yeah. And it's all boobs. Every five minutes, they're still showing the girls' boobs. Oh, they're just, and I'm like, can you just get away from the boobs? <laughs> um, but the storyline is groovy. You know, you got Lucifer, you got Lucifer's sister, you got God now, we just found out he's dead. Sorry. Um, anybody hasn't watched it yet? Spoiler but, alert. Uh, well, I mean, it doesn't really change yeah. a lot. But, uh, but it's, it's, it's really fun until, because the, the kid's in high school, and all he sees it, and he keeps just saying, titties. I love them titties. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> can you just start slashing people? So then you get blood and guts, and then I'm happy. So, right. so I, don't, I don't like the, the real... Uh, Childlike ones. I'm I'm very into the heavy duty, uh, evil, good versus evil, or evil versus evil, or evil is evil. Yeah. Um, um, they have good blood splatter. You know, they. Ah, it's lovely, lovely. See, I like the I do like the kid ones too. Though, myself, <laughs> man. You know, the ones where like I got superpowers and we're gonna fight each other. <laughs> and that's such shit. That shit's fun for me. But I like the dark stuff. Yes. You know, like Death Note was one of my favorites. That oh really, my god. That really oh. got me into the anime. Oh really? Was Death Note. Yeah. Oh. Like I grew up watching Dragon Ball and shit like that. But uh, when I was like in my mid twenties, uh, I put Death Note on and I was like why did I stop watching anime this shit's amazing oh, and it I got me right back into it I didn't start really watching it until last year oh really yeah I just um, I someone had said something about it and I was like eh. be the beginning was the one I watched because it's very detective-y and I was like wow this is really groovy so then I just started watching more and, and I must admit um, there are ones that I do watch that I love to watch and the guys are gorgeous. I, I don't know how to. I know they're anime, yeah. but they're gorgeous. They got these big eyes and <laughs> hair. Oh, well, know. that's what's fun about anime. It's art, right? And right. So they, you know, the, the the drawings are really a big part of everything. Yeah, but I'm an adult, and I'm not supposed to, you know, enjoy it as much as I do. But I do. I'll, yeah. I'll binge watch. Like last night, I think I was up till. Don't tell my. <laughs> I was up till 6 a.m. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, binging on a new one. Um, uh, some of them I, I, I bummed out about because they'll only go 10 to 12 episodes. And they're only like 23 minutes long if you get yeah. rid of the first song and the last song. Now, the music, let's get to the music of anime. <laughs> some of it is just like, ugh, but some of it just... This killer. It does note. Death it's note like that. intro it's, is yeah. Oh, that one is so super awesome. metal. Super like like hardcore punk. Yeah. And they're screaming at I brought Lee and I'm like, you gotta hear this. And he's like, and I go, yeah, this is the beginning. And uh, or like the intro to uh, Cowboy Bebop. I, I know of it, but amazing. I haven't. Amazing. I have oh, to. Cowboy Bebop. I have to. I have to listen to that one. That one's fantastic. There's a couple. There's just one. I can't. And I've watched so many. I can't remember which one it is. But the, I actually want to cover the song. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just. It's. Yeah. I. I would love to. You know what we should do? We should write a song for Japanese anime. Yes. Yes. I like that. Together we should write one and then submit it. Cause, and it's fun how if you ever listen to them where they'll start off in English uh -huh. which, and they don't uh, enunciate or pronounce things as we do. And so it sounds really weird. And then they go into Japanese and then English, Japanese. Have you ever really noticed that? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I love Some that. Some people don't. But, uh, but that's fun to watch because I'll be, <laughs> I'll be sitting there and I got my little game on and my music and, and I'll, Lee will start walking downstairs. And I'm like, sing it. And he's like, I'm like yeah, okay, it's okay. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, but the music... Um, some of it I really dig. Some of the tunes um, are great. Some of them are just really stupid. But yeah, some of them are ridiculous, ob ridiculously obnoxious. Yes, it's and like they don't super make sense. High pitched, and you're like, "What's happening? Is this song really got to play for three minutes every episode?" But if you notice, for every ending, it seems like they um, they'll go to either uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, they'll modulate yeah. the last note, and you're like. <laughs> what? <laughs> you didn't think that's where it's going to go. And most of it you can follow because you know. Um, uh, there's one when I'm watching, and I swear it sounds like the Fallout Boys in Japanese. You know, yeah. One actually sounds like Chrissy Hine um, from The Pretenders. I mean, it's that type of voice. I'm like, I, I call, I said, does it, this is crazy. It sounds like Chrissy Hine. So I got to go check it out to see if that's her doing it. <laughs> but it sounds exactly like The Pretenders. I mean, I'm like, wow. So yeah, I think it'd be groovy to uh, do music and uh, voiceovers for Japanese anime. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Um, I could be the uh, evil witch. You could be the uh, hero antagonist type. 
I'd be into that. Yeah, mm-hmm. we could definitely get down that. It'd that. be, and a lot of them don't. Um, after like twelve, even if they have multiple seasons, then the next ones are all sub. Now, are yeah. you a subber or a dubber? So it depends on what I'm watching, right? Like, Man. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You want, <laughs> you want more? You want more? <laughs> uh, Forget. Uh, no. Uh, the it depends on what I'm watching. So if it's like. If it's like the little kid ones where they're fighting each other and they're naming off all the names of their swords and their special moves, <laughs> it's got to be subtitled in Japanese, right? So then I can read what they're saying, but they're screaming all these awesome Japanese words that I right. don't know. So it still sounds cool. But if that shit is in English dub, I can't stand it, right? You know, it's really? like sort of a thousand truths and all this shit. And here's my superpower name. And I'm like, okay, I can't watch this. This is for little kids and you're not 12 anymore. Uh, but if it's in Japanese, I'm like, fucking get him with the sword of a thousand truths. And see, I have to say that some of them, because I now recognize the persons that do the overdubs are pretty much the same. And um, like the bad guy, there's always the bad guy. Then there's the um, sort of... Uh, feminine bad guy that's always like, ooh, hello, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, like, the, you know, the main guys usually got a pretty groovy voice. And I love that. But I was watching something, and it got through the 12 episodes all in dub, which is great. And then the next one started in sub, and I couldn't watch it. Oh, yeah. I'm like, God, I can't do it. I can't do it. But, yeah, I'm, I'm a dubber. Oh, uh, yeah. Boost. I, I like, um, I enjoy the Japanese language. I think it's really a pretty language. And then um, as you watch it more and more, you kind of pick up on, like, the formality part of it. Um, uh, that so, they, that how they treat each other. And so, like, like uh, Toyate, Kono Mai Maiko, Aisho Hitoyo, Shizukana Yoini Hikariyo. I don't speak Japanese, but that was awesome. <laughs> and it means, uh, let us cling together as the years go by. Oh, my loves, my loves. In the quiet of the night, let our candles always burn. Let us never lose the lessons we have learned. Oh, man. And you Impressive. know what it's from? What's that? Uh, it's Teo Toriate um, by Queen. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's on Day of the Races. That's cool. Yes, and it's beautiful when he's singing it. You know, I could sing it, but I'm not. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's Japanese. It's lovely. Um, uh, but it's really hard. I would, oh, yeah. Yeah, because a friend of mine, uh, she, I hang out with her. Not as often now because of everything going on. And she's not a musician, um, but um, she's all Japanese. And uh, her and her husband, I used to go over and do game night and stuff with them and hang out. And just, uh, she's... It's crazy to listen to them talk, and I'm like, how did you do that? <laughs> so I think it'd be sort of cool, maybe if I get like a hooked on phonics Japanese version, or what's that? What's that one that everybody uses now to learn languages? Oh, the uh, Rosetta Stone. Yeah. Yeah, the Rosetta okay. Stone. So you know what? Now that you're, you know, hanging out and having all the free time, I think you start learning Japanese. Yeah. Well, we were actually talking about learning Spanish to start to kind of get that part of our brain going, because we are, you know, like. I grew up in California, and it's like I, there's a lot of Spanish that I understand already. Uh, just, I got nothing. And, uh, and I took a couple years of Spanish, you know, so it's like I just got to, like, go, you're learning Spanish now, brain. And, like, just start from square one again and then pick it back up and, like, learn it. And then we really want to learn Japanese. I think that would be amazing. I, we, we watch so much anime. I know. I, gotta, I have to do it. I just I keep telling myself I have to. I know that we have all of this pandemic downtime um so for the musicians out there that are true musicians um um hold strong guys it's it'll be back um i am the sellout i have a day job yeah uh, that i've always had but they're uh, it they're pretty groovy with me and uh, my bosses have been to many shows at vamped that's to awesome. see me play and the smith center and i mean we're talking about the uh vice president of the company ah. and uh, she when i first met her it was funny because uh you know she was one of those aloof type people and you saw her but you didn't, never released anything to her <laughs> and uh <laughs> so one day i get this her our bsl um walks up and says uh lori would like to see you in her office i'm like oh. I'm just a regular Josephine, uh, you know, like, okay. <laughs> so I walk in into her office, and then you got to turn the corner, and then there's her office, you know, and you're like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And she's like, you're Mary, right? And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, were you at the Smith Center last night performing? I'm like, 
yeah. She goes, oh my God, it was great. <laughs> and I was like, ah. Oh. But she she came to like the Aerosmith show that we did, and she's been the Queen and um, the Prince show. I mean, she likes whenever I play, she's like, gotta tell me when you're playing. She's so cool. She's so totally cool. That's and so awesome. she goes, I've heard about you. She goes, now I know why you are the way you are. Because <laughs> you know, I've been at the company for like almost 20 years. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's during the day. My weekends are free. You know, they even, they've let me off when I have... Uh, have to go to sound check early or you know brandon flowers uh, from the killers was doing private auditions one day and they called me at like one in the afternoon and said uh, he's doing private auditions for his band uh, when he did a solo thing and nice. i said so i said okay so i told him please a friday please 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 i already put my time in she goes yeah, yeah just go yeah so i truck on over there and i'm like cool so i'm like okay so so they're like mixed stuff, stuff up i'm like what excuse me Make stuff up. Yeah, just I'm I'm sorry. Usually I come in and you give me a song and because no, I just make stuff up. So I just started making. I mean, literally, I think I wrote like two songs that I'll never remember, but I wrote, um, saying a couple off the cuff things, "Sweet Madam Blue," crap, just you know, show my voice. And uh, they were like afterwards, like, man, you really rock. You do. You guys, oh my God, your voice, you really rock. But we wanted someone with a little more soul. Oh. And I'm like. Uh, um, excuse me? <laughs> he, goes, <laughs> he goes, yeah. And I said, oh, so you wanted someone, you know, not being politically incorrect, you know, blacker. <laughs> and he's like, well, yeah. And I go, you know, I said, that is the best compliment anyone's ever given me. I said, because I am a rocker. <laughs> and I enjoy being a rocker. So if I can't make it, you know, as that, you know, big black girl singing them soul thingies, groovy. I'm good with that. Yeah. But it was just the weirdest thing. I just looked at him and went, <laughs> Okay, White Mary leaves the room now. That's um, funny. Yeah, so that was my uh, my one and only moment to you know be with Brandon Flowers from The Killers. So uh, sorry, Brandon, wasn't black enough for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, hope everything works out for you. So uh, yeah, it, that that it, I thought in the beginning uh, uh, had been a slight issue on a few planes of my existence of the music that I chose. I mean, I grew up Catholic, uh -huh. so we are very stale. You know, the Jesuits, you know, are just like, Hello, I love you, God, la, 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 la. <sighs> Boring as hell, you know. Now, the Baptists, they rock, from what I hear. They yeah. just, they rock and roll. They just hands in the air, and they're jumping around. So I never got that soul thing going on. Um, didn't go to school with any other... <clears throat> Dark skinned, I'll say dark skinned, dark skinned people. <laughs> I went to school in the private Catholic schools with the nice girls in the uniforms and the little beanies, yeah. um, which is why I talk funny. Um, everyone says I'm a valley girl, but I grew up in Missouri. Uh, <laughs> but I was, so I was never surrounded by, um, I mean, my parents, you know, were digging like the Izzy Brothers and Ohio Players and all that. And I'd listen to it, you know, but I thought Nat King Cole was like an amazing cat. Um, so that was a little weird for my parents because um, that was a couple errors before I should have been digging it. And then I discovered Space Oddity in 1972 and uh. Uh, lost my mind. That we moved from the city of St. Louis to the county of St. Louis, you know, to all <clears throat> light-skinned people school. Um, and, uh, and, you know, your ecosystem changed. So the music I was listening to uh, initially was R&B. I do remember it. <laughs> but, um, but then, you know, I'm 10 years old. So you do what your friends do. So, like I said, David Bowie, Space Oddity, saved my money, $7 and like 65 cents. I said, Mom, take me to the store, you know. She took me to the store and uh, I picked out the album. And I'm like, and she goes, who's that girl? Because ah. you know, the orange hair? Yeah. I go, and David Bowie, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and she's like, okay. So uh, I brought it home, put it on my phone, got the big 70s headphones on, you know, I'm laying on my bed and I'm digging it and I'm rocking out. And, you know, I got eyes on my backside. I see electric tomatoes on credit card rye bread. My mom's like, what are you listening to? I'm like, Dave Bowie. I love him. You know? <laughs> um, and then, uh, then Bohemian Rhapsody came out, and uh, uh, I lost my mind again. So second artist lost my mind. So uh, Queen taught me how to sing yeah. um, as far as, like, uh, harmonies and stuff. Opera uh, in college, I didn't take it in high school, but opera in college, um, high soprano, major lines, shoulders down, shoulders down, neck up back, because my teacher was German, Mrs. Stosnick, shoulders down, shoulders down, she had a ruler, shoulders down, oh, I'm like, okay, <laughs> look, um, so she, she goes, you've never, you've, you've never had lessons, and I'm like, no, that's how I sing, 
very good, you know. And, so, and she's smoking camels the whole time, because you can do that in the 80s. You can smoke. Um, and, uh, it was encouraged. It was encouraged, you know. But I had been listening to Queen and Bowie and um, all those cats. And uh, so my sophomore year, I came home uh, for a summer break, uh, intending to go back my junior year. And my friends in the church, they had a band. And I was like, oh, OK, I'll come down. I'll come and see you guys. And so I get down and I'm going to sing a song. I'm like, no, sure, what? I don't know. Do you guys know Tie Your Mother Down by Queen? Like, yeah, we know. <laughs> I mean, literally, in my head, something clicked when I started singing that song. Lost my mind. Yeah. And uh, I went home the next day and told my parents, I'm not going back to school. <laughs> I said, I want to find a rock band, and I want to sing rock and roll. And my mom's like, okay. She goes, well, you have to the end of the summer oh, to find a band. And she goes, a rock band. That's fantastic. And uh, if you don't, if by the end of summer, you're going back to school. And I'm like, okay. So I started auditioning, going through the papers, you know. Calling people up, and a couple guys I went to, and they were like, mm, no, we really want a guy, or whatever. Uh, so finally, <laughs> this one band, and they were playing um, like 300 people at the, I think it was the Hoffman House. Uh, and uh, so I go out there, and got this cute dress on. I, look really cute. I was really cute back then. And uh, I said, so when do you guys want me to audition? And they said, uh, now. And I'm like, that. <laughs> they go, look at the list, pick a song, get up there and sing it. <laughs> Look, I've never sung with a professional band. I mean, high school plays, you know, nothing. And uh, this place is packed, you know, people eating lunch, supper, because that's what they did, supper and rock and roll. And uh, so I got up there and I sang like a Vicky Sue Robinson song, which none of you out there probably know, called I Got the Music in Me. And I'm jumping around. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and they said, you're hired and we're going uh, on tour uh, our first stop is Paducah, Kentucky, uh, and it's in um, six days, four days. So I said, ah. so Learn I go all home. those songs. I was like, ah. but I was doing backups. I, I did a couple leads, but uh, most of it was backups. And so I went home, and like uh, four days goes by, and I'm packing my stuff. Mom comes out, and she goes, What are you doing? I go, well, I'm packing my stuff. You said I had till the end. Of four days before school started. Yeah. And I found a van. She thought I was packing for school. <laughs> so she's like, no, I said, you said, you know, because now I'm 19, uh -huh. right? Still a virgin, just so you know. <laughs> 19, and all of a sudden this tour bus, this just outrageously Terry Cracky and the facts of life is what they were called. Tour bus comes rolling up my private Jewish neighborhood and uh, honking their horn and music playing and I'm by my home and literally uh, you know, within, you know, what is it, eight hours or something? I'm in Paducah, Kentucky, in my hotel room, getting ready for, like, a gig, because I'd been practicing on that. You know, they only had a couple songs for me to do and some backgrounds just to start, you know. And then we drive to the next place, and they drove around and took my measurements and bought me clothes. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Um, but the lead guy was sort of a, he's probably dead now, so I can probably say it, but he was sort of a dick. Yeah. So um, I decided uh, we were in Texas, Dallas. Never been to Dallas before. They have really big crickets in Dallas. Okay. They literally had to move me up more floors because there were crickets everywhere. I mean, it was like it was like a, a cricket thing that was going on that year in Texas. Oh, yeah, probably like what we have around here where the, the crickets, yeah. they breed like crazy and yeah. they're just everywhere. So I was like, you guys, you need to put me on like the 18th floor or whatever. So, And so then I went into the, the leader guy's, Terry's room, and I said, um, when the, this tour's over, uh, I'm going to quit. I, I want to sing lead. I want my own band. And he's like, here's your pay. You can leave now. Oh. I'm like, okay. So here I am on a Greyhound bus yep. <laughs> from, Tex from uh, Texas to Missouri coming home. And I was like freaking out. And I was like, what did I just do? Uh, that, was, that was a little scary because I was like, okay, is my career already over? And it's only been like less than a year. So... But the guitarist from the band, he had quit as well, and we formed a band. And then I toured on and off for like three years doing the uh, <clears throat> Missouri, Indiana, Kansas circuit. Oh, wow. Holiday Inns, Ramadas, you know, and you'd play from eight to, what is it, eight to one, four sets a night. Uh, your food's free, your room's comped. Uh, you'd play three weeks at a time, you know. The airport, run in thingies, all of those. those I remember they were fun, though. You know? Yeah. 
still a virgin. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so and, and it was interesting, you know, because I mean I'd never been, never been on a date, uh, never kissed a really kissed a guy before. So going out into that world, um, yes, I know it was. Uh, um, What's the word we always use? Lounge music. Well, not lounge music. It was still rock and roll. I mean, we still uh-huh. did what was uh, current, you know, uh, Bob Seger and John Cougar Mellencamp. And I did flash dance, though. Don't laugh. And I did the dance. <laughs> <laughs> Literally did the dance on stage. Mm-hmm. Just doing, oh, my God, it was hilarious. Um, they were going to splash water on me once, and I said no. Um, but, yeah, I'd never been out into that world, and it was uh, – uh, it was scary sometimes. Um, guys that would hit on me and stuff, I didn't know what to do. I don't, you know, guys at church don't hit on you. Come on. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, they're too busy looking at the priest. Um, oh. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was an experience, to say the least. And, and I had a couple uh, offers, um, career offers, but they just didn't seem really legit when they said, come back to my hotel room and let's talk about it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe not. So, yeah, it was. It's it's scary out there in the rock world for women back in the day because a lot of them were um, not reputable women, and a lot of them were definitely not reputable guys. You know, um, but I muddled through. I'm that's, still here. That's the music industry, right? It's like. Uh just a bunch of scumbags trying to take advantage of people and like trying to steal people's art to f- make money for themselves without actually putting in work or just take advantage of young women who uh, they might think don't know better. Still virgin. Still uh, virgin. I'm going to have to write a song called Still Virgin. Um, yeah, but I persevered. I kept my uh, integrity. Um, I made some mistakes, but they weren't life altering and, um, I'm not going to hell for it. Well, actually, one of them I might. <laughs> yeah, I got to think about that one. Yeah, I may be destined, but I've decided if I do go, that I'm going to be um, a crossroad demon. There you go. Yeah, so I'm going to go down and um, sell deals to expiring, aspiring musicians. <laughs> So, yeah, so I'll be, like, all over the scene. I'll be, like, that A&R uh, guy, and I'll be offering deals, like, okay, so uh, we'll give you 10 years. Right. And then your soul belongs to us. Come on, how many kids do you think would say no? Hello, we had the 80s. <laughs> Look, that was like selling your soul to all the A&R people, because they never told you back then that those, some of those signing bonuses weren't bonuses. They were like, here's a bunch of money. That were loaning you. Right. And then they're like, okay, so if your record doesn't, then it's because I have a friend that's, I think he's still working in Burger King trying to pay it off. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'll be a crossword demon. Oh, I have little horns. <laughs> you love me. Uh, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, that or I'll be an administrative assistant for um, the devil. You know, I'll have a nice cooler apartment, you know, on the north side of hell. You know, it's not so hot in the south. <laughs> Not my thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it all planned out because I'm not going up. So if I'm going to down, I'm going to have a great time down there. I'm going to say, okay, let's embrace this. Come on. Come on. Who wouldn't want 10 years of complete anything that you want, fame and fortune musically? <laughs> I could do that now. I've lived a great life. I'd have uh-huh. no problem signing a deal right now. <laughs> I, I would. I, it'd be great. The, the 10 years would be just like, and then, okay, now I'm a crossroad demon. So it, it's win-win. So if you know... If there's any crossroad demons out there listening, please call me. Five 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 six 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 six. So I'm ready. Yeah. Ah, good times. That is a uh, fantastic promotion. Uh, hopefully, you get yourself a deal with the devil. <laughs> so yeah. if I become famous in the next yeah. year, you'll know I'm why. What happened. <laughs> That's right, because all the demons that watch my show. Uh, the yeah, devil. they they do. You know, yeah, but they you, keep the, an eyes on me. Yeah, we were we were watching a movie the other day about um, heavy metal in the I think it was the '80s, and people were killing heavy metal kids after concerts. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't remember. I'll have Silly. to remember them. Yeah, but it was it's really good. But uh, it turned out to be not who you thought it was, and the people that were doing it were I can see I'll give it away, so I can't say. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was interesting because it was like all brand new. But it's so funny how, watching them like in the front of the stage losing their minds. You're like, God, I remember when I used to. Now I, if I'm not sitting down somewhere, yeah. I'll enjoy the tunes, but I don't need to be up front. Like no way. 
Except for Nine Inch Nails. Oh, yeah, you're a Nine Inch Nails fan? Uh, yes, I've seen them 29 times. Oh, nice. Um, I, the last time they were here, they played three dates. I caught the third one. I caught the, the first two. Yeah. Because I had, I had a gig on the last one. The, now, let me ask you something. Do they, uh, do they play closer, or do they just not play closer when I went and saw them? Um, it was the third night. Some people are like, we ain't playing that one. We're sick of that song. Um, the, on the second, the first leg of the tour, uh, well, they did two tours. Yeah. Um, they did it almost back to back, which I was very surprised. Um, they played, I thought they played closer, but they didn't play it the other two nights. Cause the, the first time they came around three times, I saw all three. Yeah. So, um, my husband thinks I'm nuts. Um, yeah, and then, nuts. uh, and then, but I always buy a VIP first one is a VIP one. So, you know, sit on right on the edge. Um, what is it? The, is it a hard rock? Right. That I think that was the hard rock. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. right up there, the first level, I get the first row. You get cocktail service. You know, there's no one in front of you. You could stand up and lose your mind. I always want the corner seat, right? Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, it's really not that bad. It's like 200 something dollars. Yeah. You know, private bathroom, private bar. Life's good. And then, like, usually the next couple nights, uh, I'll go and I'll be like, oh, right in the middle, just ah. lose my mind. And one night, I guess you weren't there because um, it was the second night they... Fire alarm went off. Oh, really? So all the well, you know, all the music dropped. Cause, yeah. Yeah. And uh, they kept playing without the music and people. And I'm like, all I'm thinking in my head is great white, great white. So I go up to the bar and stand by the bar like this. And I'm like, okay, so if there's a stampede, no one's going to knock me over. <laughs> and then all of, everything comes back up. But nobody. Everyone's like, stampede to the bar. Well, yeah. Kill Mary. We got one more drink before we die. <laughs> um, but they are by far one of the greatest live bands I've ever seen. Yeah, their LD is pretty incredible, I'll tell you that much. Uh, oh, is it? The lighting designer, yeah. Uh, it's, he, he fucking blew my mind that night. See, um, now I was at the Aladdin uh, tour and then the Hard Rock tour and then the other Hard Rock tour. The Aladdin tour was pretty cool because they had like the panels and they were behind them. Yeah. And then at one point everybody was playing keyboards everybody's playing keyboards one time just everybody and even the drummer and it's like and their drummer is an amazing cat oh my god i don't know his name because i'm really i actually quite shitty when it comes to uh musicians names oh, um i just say dude and dude um but trent uh just amazing uh friggin amazing i just i can't speak enough of it um anytime they play i will go they gave us free two live albums Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, you can download those, and uh, they're it's all instrumental, but it's really it's really pretty groovy. It's, um, yeah, that's one of the cool things they do too. They uh, they release like their albums in multi-track form as well, so you can remix their albums or do whatever you yes. want. I remember when I was going to school for audio engineering. We yes, had a bunch they of let the stems. Yeah. I learned that word stems yeah. or phrase so that you can do them. There's a couple I wouldn't mind. Um, in the remains, we do wish, which is pretty fun to do. I love doing Wish, um, but they, uh, uh, they're outstanding um, as far as uh, the live shows because they're, um, they're damn perfect, you know, even in the 90s when he was like completely screwed up in the 90s, I mean, he was a mess in the 90s, um, yeah. they still played a great show, um, I actually got to see them and David Bowie here in Vegas. Oh, together? Yeah, they toured, and uh, it, well, I'm Afraid of Americans. Uh, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. And so they toured, and it was uh, um, 90 Sales went on first, which was like ugh, epic, blowing, mind blowing. And then all of a sudden, you don't even notice David Bowie comes out, and they're changing the set. And you don't even notice that the entire set, because his band's coming on now. You don't even notice, because he's singing Hurt. Yeah. And then Trent comes out, and he's singing Hurt with them. And the whole stage is changing, and you're just mesmerized on these two cats singing Hurt with harmony. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and. Uh, all of a sudden, it's over, and then Reeves Gabrell starts playing, and you're like, oh, Bowie time. Yeah, it, yeah, it, amazing tour, I gotta admit, amazing tour. I've, wow. I've got to see David quite a few times over the years. Even I, I get to see Brian there. May and uh, Queen, um, Freddie Mercury, I have to, I saw them once, I think in 1982 or something, um, but to see Freddie Mercury. Oh. Uh, it was just like a dream come true. I was, and I uh, smelled a uh, pot for the first time. Um, <laughs> it was, I was like, what's that smell? 
Oh, that's funny. And it's yeah. like, I'm like, okay, because I snuck. I was in college, and I, uh, I was in college in Fulton, Missouri, which is uh, like 20 minutes from Columbia. I was a little Sigma Chi, just like Brad Pitt. <laughs> and well, he was our, in our father school or our brother um, school in Columbia. And he was Sigma Chi, so I met him once, but I didn't know he was Brad Pitt. But I noticed him I had white jeans on. Ooh, the tush on that boy. Um, yeah, he works hard on his body. Oh, let me tell you. And uh, so uh, guys came in. I was um, working, you know, work study. Um, said uh, talking music, and he's like, oh, "We're going to see Queen." I'm like, oh. he goes, "Where are they? In Kansas City?" Oh. It's like three-hour drive. And I barely know these guys. I, I know they're Fidelts or SAEs or something on campus, but, you know, for all I know, they could have been serial killers that, at our school. I knew they were at school, but I didn't know them. Um, I was like, okay, I'll go. Yeah. And so I got in a car three hours with a bunch of dudes that didn't know, and we got lost, and we finally found Kemper Arena. Um, and uh, I, it was Queen and Jefferson Airplane. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, which they were amazing. But then Freddie Mercury came out, and I was like, yeah, you know this is why I, you know, I decided I wanted to sing rock and roll, um, or I was learning rock and roll. I hadn't decided yet because it was still my sophomore year. I hadn't made the click, but uh, to see him doing live and then we'll be him in Rhapsody, the most amazing thing is they walked off stage and played it, the middle part. They didn't even attempt it, and because oh, okay. yeah, and then they had like video screen stuff going and you know the live effects. I'd never been to a concert before. So to me, that was your like, first concert? Yeah. <laughs> Look. <sighs> oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's just like I was, and I'm, what's that smell? <laughs> oh, yeah. and the that's were, the smell of, uh, uh, of every concert ever. Yeah. yeah. Well, I learned that. And then it was so funny. When I came back, my uh, fraternity brothers, I was with my best friend, Jerry Z. We'll just say Jerry Z. Um, I was in love with him since, like, grade school. Do you know he called me? And asked me to sing at his wedding. Oh, it was heartbreaking, dude. Yeah. Totally in love with this guy, like since like grade school. And then I didn't know he was going to the same college as I was going to. And all of a sudden there he was, because we went to I had went to a different high schools. And uh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden I hear this Adams, which is my maiden name, and I was like, and it was it was Jerry Z. I won't say his last name. <laughs> and we were inseparable in school. And then so one day I was sitting in his room and his roommate grabbed me by the arms. I'm like, what the? He starts blowing bong smoke in my face. Ah. Okay. And we were listening to Chicago. So all of a sudden I heard nothing but the music. I heard, And then all of a sudden I didn't hear the music. And I was like, you know, I never smoked dope before. <laughs> Look, I was so friggin' high. It was not even funny. Um, yeah, that was the first time I, yeah, I... I really wasn't good at it. <laughs> like, <laughs> look, I got it, man. I was not good at it. But it made the music sound amazing, I must oh, yeah. admit. I mean, I was hearing, like, horn section and drums and stuff, because 25 and 64 is just oh, an God. amazing yeah. song. You hear on, and, and he played really loud. He had big speakers even for then in his dorm room. We used to get in trouble all the time. And to smoke dope for the first time, I just sort of, I just melded into the song. Um, didn't smoke very much after that. I, I, yeah. I smoked a little more there the next, uh, the rest of the year. When I came home, nobody told me that if you're not good at it, you can't drive and smoke pot. <laughs> ha, no. So I'm on my way downtown. You stuck on shit on the side of the road. Yeah, I'm on my way downtown, which is, you know, probably on the freeway in St. Louis. is about 20 minutes. We lived in what was comparable to Summerlin here. That's where we lived in, and downtown is like the strip here. And it took me like an hour and a half. I'm just driving around. I'm like, oh my god. I n and I never smoked dope again. <laughs> I never, I never smoked pot after that. Um, I was like, wow. Several years, I was uh, um, hanging out with you know Eric Clapton's band. My best friend was screwing one of the guys, so yeah. I just tagged along, which is great, you know, you know. And uh, we, uh, this uh, one of them gave me uh, some pot afterwards because we were doing some other illicit drugs that sort of keep you awake, but we won't say what that is. Ha! I know it could be a child's program. If there's any children listening Definitely out there, not a child's program. Okay, any kids listening out there, don't do it unless you really want to. Um, <laughs> we clicked that box that says this is not for children. <laughs> not for the, there's a specific one when you. It's like the anime. Uh, what is no, it? Uh, no kids. Oh, okay, yeah, adults only. Yeah, we're uh, swearing and, and talking about adult stuff here. Viewer discretion is advised. Big time. Um, and uh, so he said, uh, "You guys look pretty high." He goes, "I uh, hear. Um, take this joint back with you." And, 
and uh, you know, for, smoke before you go to bed. I'm like, God, I haven't smoked dope. Okay. Yeah, he had laced it with PCP, so it wasn't oh, no. a good. No, it, and all I could nice. think of, all I could think of was, I I was trying to lay in bed and and, and I'm twitching and I called a friend of mine, I'm like, run, run, run. and he goes, yeah, no, um, to get dressed because if they're gonna find me dead, they're not gonna find me dead naked. I put on clean underwear <laughs> because your mom always. I mean, that was all going through my head. If they're gonna find me. They're not going to find me naked. Oh, uh, so, that's funny. Yeah, so that was a long night. Yeah. Getting down on that. Um, Nobody likes the uh, come down off of that kind of bullshit. No, and that's why I don't accept drinks from people anymore in bars. Cause yeah, you someone, um, uh, I was playing a gig, and uh, someone sent me up a lemon drop. I remember it because I have to remember it. A lemon drop. And so I chugged it down, you know. It's like, okay, great, sit we're <laughs> and like trying to grab the microphone, my hands going through it. Yeah, acid. Oh, fun. Yeah, yeah. but some, but they. But not when you don't volunteer for the ride. Right, and I'm on stage for like the next, you know. So the first set. You can't take acid. On I stood stage. at the side of the stage, and Mississippi Nights is 1500 capacity. Jim Morrison. Yeah, well, he can, but he danced around, <laughs> and then he got naked and went to jail. And I'll explain the naked part in a few minutes. Um, so I'm on the side of the stage. <laughs> I'm on the side of the stage, and I'm like, okay, I need to get to the dressing room. So I have to walk through 1,500 people uh -huh. to get to our dressing room. I can do it. I can do it. And I'm sitting there. I just put one foot in front of the other, Mary. Just jump down. Just jump down. Because the stage is like this, really high, really high stage. I staged over once, and they didn't catch me. So, yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, the band comes. And they go, you, uh, let's go. And I'm like, let's go. You've been standing there for 20 minutes. What? <laughs> I'd say there were 20 minutes trying to get off the stage. I'm like, crap. So, uh, so they told me that uh, I got a standing ovation for um, White Rabbit. I bet. They said that I was just crazed. <laughs> and <laughs> they said it of was. Of all songs. Right. They said it was one of the, and they said people were just like, and I, I don't know, you yeah. know. So uh, I get in my car to drive home. And my windshield's like melting. Oh, and I got out of my car. Good. I got out of my car. You know, I'm like, okay, I can't do this. So I got back to my apartment. And I lived in this cool area called the Central West End. Um, uh, very hipster, very, um, uh, a lot of homosexuals, you know, the whole bit. And, uh, but very cool. You know, I lived uh, in a place, um, Ann Rice, one of Ann Rice's houses was down the street. And then most of it was like the restaurants, people lived above them, music stores, bakeries, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, so I decided I'm gonna go on my roof because it's a beautiful night. Okay, now I'm on acid. <laughs> like, I'm alone. Um, and I figured I could fly. Oh no. So I said, but I need to take my clothes off so I could just, so I got stripped naked. All right. And I'm standing on the side of the building. Mom, do not listen to this, okay? <laughs> so I'm standing on the side of the building and I'm like, and I look down and I see like a really cool Porsche and a nice Jag. Um, because I had a Honda, but other people in my building lived well. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, what if I can't fly? Yeah. What if I fall? And then I'll hurt their car, and it's a really pretty car. You know, the, maybe I'll just lay down here on the bench for a while. <laughs> and so I lay down. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I hear the elevator, and this was like six hours later, and the elevator, someone's coming up. Yeah. I'm like, you know, and the sun's out, and the birds are around. Oh, my God. <laughs> Couldn't find my clothes. <laughs> so I waited behind the door, and as soon as they opened it, I just <laughs> ran down. Fortunately, I didn't lock my apartment door. There you go. Oh, Otherwise, yeah. I would have been, you know, Stuck so in the I'm, hallway. Yeah, stuck naked. naked. So, yeah. So, haven't done acid much since then, and I don't accept drinks from people that I don't really know anymore. Yeah, he's yeah. Not, that's a good policy. Well, you people know bring up send up drinks yeah. all the time. Um, well, back then, people would. Uh, they would buy it and put it on the stage, or they would buy it and, and then tell the waitress. Um, now, if the waitress brings it up, that's one thing, because I know she's cool. Like, the kids have vamped and stuff. They yeah. bring up a tray. But so, uh, apparently, this guy had, has, had been doing that to lots of people. So um, Maybe giving him acid. Mm -hmm. So he actually sort of got run out of town. Can't give him more details of that. But yeah. uh, the community took care of the community back then. Good. So when he found that's that he was doing it, he was doing it to girls. I mean, it's like, you're right. I mean, if you if you want to do a drug, by all means, uh, groovy do them, but be responsible yeah. about them. Um, 
because they were all legal at once. Right. One time or another, they were legal. <laughs> okay. It's like. Like LSD can be such a spiritual and like mind opening experience and therapeutic life changing experience, but I if you just paper, drop it on someone, yeah. But I did a paper on it. And, did you? Uh, yeah, it was a um, I, it was a speech class. I took a, a spe I took a speech in Dixon class to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> that lasted for about a month, um, and just for articulation purposes. And uh, they, uh, uh, he goes, well, I need you to uh, write a speech. And um, or um, read through a speech, make it commanding. You know the people sit up, and uh, so <laughs> I uh, did some research. And you know it's like, hi, I'm Mary Adams. Uh, I'm a sophomore. Blah blah blah. LSD 25. <laughs> LSD 25. And people are like, uh... and so I just it would, that he goes he goes uh, wasn't excited about your choice. He goes, but you did command the thingy and everybody looked up, you know, because everybody's bored. People were talking about their dogs and politics and blah, blah. And I was like, yeah. LSD 25. First thing I said, it was like, heads. I heard snapping. Yeah. You know, like, oh, books, what? I'm awake. Um, and it was fun. But yeah, um, drugs are um, silly, but yeah. fun. Um, I just watched a movie last night called The Binge. I personally think i saw that everybody should watch it it's on netflix uh it's on hulu on hulu and on hulu. uh yeah so the world uh made everything illegal everything and no tolerance policy that's ridiculous except once a year for 12 hours over 18 can do any drug they want the, the cops open up their thingies and highest bidders so <laughs> You got people with plates of it's cocaine hilarious. and their face in it, and it's yeah. just and it's just crazy, crazy. So it's about uh, these three guys, and it's their first. They just turned eighteen. Oh, this is their first binge. Their first binge. Let me say, as a person who has <laughs> done several benders like that, twelve hours is not nearly <laughs> enough time. I, I was like, why don't you guys make it come on, twenty-four? Twelve days. <laughs> you know? Okay, well, yeah, but you know, I had to make <laughs> the movie interesting, but they only had twelve oh, hours, and it's so yeah. funny. It's not giving it into way, but they were showing at the end, um, or at the beginning, Vince Vaughn is in it, and he's hilarious, because he's Vaughn. a teacher telling everybody, don't binge. Yeah. You know, and he's showing him pictures. And, and then I'm sure he's out in the middle of the binge doing more I, cocaine than anybody. I, right? I couldn't say. She's like, no spoilers. But it is so funny, because I thought, you know, if they, I don't really like politics or anything, and uh, it's not my bag to get on and preach to people, but... You know, if you they made it no politics. No, it, no if they made it all legal. <laughs> just think, we could get out of the country could get out of debt right now. We're yeah. taxing it. I mean, marijuana alone is giving us money that we preciously need. Yeah, so, I personally think that's the the way we should be doing this, I mean, man. Like all of them. If you want to experiment with your consciousness or your body, like who uh, are we to stop you from yeah. that? That's really taking away your freedoms, man. If you want to fuck your life up, fuck your life up. Well, yeah, and if you, you know, if I can go to the store and you know buy. Um, I'd like, uh, uh, could you just give me a gram of that Colombian? Thanks. R right? Can you, can you throw in a straw? That'd be great. You know, sanitary reasons. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Uh, it'll regulate the cut. Nobody's going to die because it's cut with arsenic. Mm. Um, yeah. They or tax fentanyl it. Fentanyl right now, right? Like everything's getting oh, fentanyl yeah. put in it. It scares me a little bit. Powder, it's fucked it scares up. me a little bit. It um, should scare you. Not, not that I'm doing anything. No, um, of course not. Ever. No, um, these, are all, these are all stories about... Back yeah. in the day. Back in the day. Yeah, we back, used to do back stuff. Back day was pure and it was fun and you didn't have to worry Don't about do stuff. Don't do stuff anymore. Don't do, no. No, of mm. course not. But I just, I refuse to believe that um, it's okay for... I know this, I'll end it really quick, but I, I don't think it's fair that people can go out and drink their brains out and that's legal and that's okay. Yeah. But you, I can't... Uh, trust me, I, I never sped or went over the line when I was doing blow, okay? Yeah. <laughs> never. I was wide awake. Now, I might have been doing 35 and a 60, but, like, you know, you're going too fast, and, you know, you're doing too slow. Like, uh, um, but, yeah, I, um, make it all legal. Let everybody make a choice. It's a choice. It's a, it's a choice. choice. If you're an idiot, you're going to be an idiot. People kill themselves from liver disease every day, yeah. you know, but it's legal, so, huh, yeah, or yeah. kill people. So, 
Just make a choice. I'll they stay inside. They do it with food. I'll, yeah, I'll stay, yeah, food. Oh, my God. Yeah, people, the heart can, heart disease is like the number one thing killing people nowadays. Yes. It's from fucking eating bro, the wrong yes. things. And if you're allowed to stuff whatever garbage you want in your body and kill yourself and destroy your heart, I mean. They need no to reason. ban Snickers bars because those right? things are evil. Okay. But, but, but I love Snickers delicious. bars. Yeah, I know. See? Right? But it's legal. But yeah. I could die from eating too many of those. So and I just don't think the government needs their fucking hands all in people's. People's consciousness and people's yeah. decision they can, to they can have their, with hands, their bodies. They can have their hands in taxes. Yeah. Because then they could, uh, you know, help get us out of debt and the monies would go to programs, um, you know, don't do drug programs. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I go to, yeah, that was, it was funny in that movie last night, one of the guys in it, and he goes, it's been signed. I was, and he opened a little box. I'm always ready for everything. So he's got like a little of everything in there. And there was a scene with a cow. And it's crazy, yeah. <laughs> but trust me, all those drugs came in handy. The cow's okay. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna definitely be watching the binge. Tonight. Oh yeah, I, I, we watched it last, uh, yeah, last night. It was, it was hilarious. Um, but yeah, that's the only politically, that's the only thing that I, I wish they would do is make everything legal. Um, you can make it 21. I'm good with that. Yeah. You know. You should make it 21. Yeah. You know? Let people's brains develop, and then well, fucking I'm, let them do whatever they want and experiment. And I think if you if take you can't the, drink yeah. till you're 21, then you can't do anything else till you're 21. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm cool with that. Uh, like I said, less crime in the streets. You can't um, smoke cigarettes till you're 21 now. What? Yeah. They changed the law. I get carded, but I thought it was 18. 18. It was forever. And then they just recently changed the law. I feel so much better because yeah. I get carded. They, and I thought it was 18. Now they're like, oh, you're not 20, 21. Um, I, wow. knew, I knew one person who was a little younger and they were 18 and they were smoking cigarettes. And then they're like 19 and they're smoking cigarettes. And then they're 20 and they, have, they can't buy cigarettes anymore. So they got like two years in and then they're just like, fuck, I can't buy these <laughs> things. And <laughs> they got to awesome. wait two more years before they can buy cigarettes. Or, oh, you know, poor thing. Or one more year, right? Uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I, and there's no reason that the government should be. And then the problem is they're punishing people with jail jail sentences, jail time, fucking huge fines for for experimenting with their own bodies. That's bullshit. Yeah, I mean, like, if you do something and it it hurts someone else, me, I can drive into a tree right now, and mm -hmm. I'm good with that because it's me, my car, and I drive yeah, a tree. Yeah. I couldn't live with driving into a child into no. a tree or having someone else in the car. Yeah, well, that's so, manslaughter. Right. Well, that's just, I, that would be suicide because I'd end up killing myself after that because I, I wouldn't yeah. be able to live with that. So um, but I, I feel people should party till they can't party anymore. Just be safe, you yeah. know? So whatever you do, I mean, they should have banned sex because, you know, that was killing people for a while. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, you can you can do all this like control over uh, over people and try to try to restrain them from doing things that are bad for them. But it's like people are going to do dumb shit that is bad for them, no matter what laws you put out there. And, and really, it's more of an education thing and like uh, offering programs to like help people with drug addiction right. as opposed to like, oh, you're a drug addict. Let's throw you in with the murders and the rapists. It's yeah. like that. they're not committing crimes, though. They're not fucking hurting anybody. Yeah. It's like they're hurt. They, they're they hurt need themselves. help. They yeah. need help. They don't need uh, punishment. Right. And like that's just it's an old antiquated way of thinking. And I'm, I'm for, and honestly, I'm for the same thing with like prostitution right like if we have the well, brothels the here oldest. yeah it's like it's been, people have been doing that forever and it does it's if we regulated it right girls could safe. be protected I mean, but they do it's opposed, regulated yeah in in nevada and, and, it, and it works great yeah i mean the girls make money guys and or girls are happy and they're safe um, is there a dude brothel around here i'm sure there is but I mean, that's not a hard thing to acquire, all right? It's uh, <laughs> I, I don't think many guys need much convincing to turn into a prostitute if you got money being waved around. Right, They're like, what? what? You're gonna pay me for it? I was, uh, yes, yes, yes. Let's go right now. Uh, okay, well, you just um, <laughs> uh, remember, guys, five 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 six 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 six. Like anybody uh, ever willing to give that out? Just let me know. Um, yeah. I'll pay well. I I still work. Oh, <laughs> like, you're fucking hilarious. I still work. Sorry, honey. But, um, but yeah, that uh, um, I mean, we wouldn't have had Al Capone and that whole lifestyle if they hadn't done booze the way they did. Yeah, the prohibition. You know? And that didn't solve anything. It didn't sound, yeah, it, it created it, like, underground like, gang environments. Oh my god, it was horrible. I mean, we were. You think drive-bys are bad now? The drive-bys mm. back then were just hideous. I mean. 
they those machine guns going off and people in restaurants and blah blah blah. And it's like what? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, so we would have never had that. Um, I mean, they still had their mafia types. Uh, everybody has those. You know, the Irish came over. The, uh, Italians, you know, New York, and God, if you ever watch the movie Gangs in New York, that is like yeah. so completely true and heavy duty. They didn't, you know, let's rumble. There, it wasn't West Side Story. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they had <laughs> hatchets and thing. I, that scene I couldn't even watch, and yeah. I watch a lot of it, but because it's real, it's really funny. As um, people laugh at me when it is slight. Oh, well, when it's fantasy, sci-fi, it's not real. I can pretty much. I saw a cow get hit by a bus the other day. And it was the most amazing thing I ever saw. Um, <laughs> or people, you know, um, people get hit by a bus. Those, that's amazing when they throw a roll over. I thought uh -huh. when they start doing that, that was like the best thing ever. <laughs> so then every movie, everybody, somebody was getting hit by a car or bus. Yeah. Um, I can watch all that. I can watch blood and gore, guts, you know. Now, I like a lot of intelligent horror. Um, not like a. Uh, Freddy, Freddy Krueger or any of those guys. I don't like those movies. Those are stupid. Because the guy and the girl uh, that are having sex always get killed. And the best friend, uh, Japanese or black, always dies. And then the one girl's in the end trying to save herself or her husband because nobody ever gets away from them. And then they never die or they come back yeah. in the next sequel. Hate those. Super um, cliched. But when it comes to uh, movies that are real, uh -huh. um, I mean l really real, because that was going on back then. I, I find it horrifically disturbing that I can't watch. Um, I watched uh, Ben Affleck's brother, Casey, in a movie. I can't remember the name of it. And Jessica Alba, or the other one, one of the Jessicas was in it. And he was punching her in the face. Oh, and yeah. you it slowly saw her face breaking apart. I couldn't watch the rest of the movie. That disturbed me because I know that really happens to people. Yeah. I, I don't I don't feel really well about watching people get I can't watch the purge. I really don't like people getting beat to death. There's something about it. You know, take a gunshot, I'm cool with that. Uh, a knifing every once in a while, not a samurai sword, that's cool. But <laughs> people that are actually getting beat to death, because that has to me to me has to be the most painful way to die. Yeah. Is that you're getting and I can't watch those. Anything that's that realistic or um, or like they're are real, um, I can't watch. But anything else, pss, I got no problems watching. Oh, I see. Yeah. I'll rewind. Go, well, let me see that again. Did you see that? <laughs> like his face. Just, oh. um, but yeah, um, it's it's crazy uh, that I've just completely lost train of thought of what I was talking about and how I got there. That's okay. Um, <laughs> Did you ever see Saving Private Ryan? Uh. Uh, no. Those crazy war movies, Saber is so gory, and it's it's another one of those things where it's like, oh, this is really how it went down. You know, the, it's brutal. Uh, was that World War Two or Vietnam? I think that was World War Two. World War One was. That was people don't really know how much of a nightmare World War One was. I was a huge World War Two buff. Yeah. For the longest time, as far as um, um, I uh, was uh, read up a lot on um, international. Um, what was going on in Japan, um, um, the Holocaust. I went and found everything I could find about the Holocaust. Um, even in the Russian Revolution, the Tsars, Anastasia, all that. That was really interesting to me, and I would find everything I could and read up about it. When you actually had to go to the library back then, still a virgin. Um, <laughs> I had nothing else to do on a Friday night. Um, and I thought those were, like, amazing. But, uh, and nobody really talked about My father was in World War II. I never talked about it. Um, yeah, I'm that old. Um, but nobody talked about World War One, and I've watched a few. World War One was brutal. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, they Big were. Well, I mean, it, but it, the Civil War was way more brutal. I got it. I'm going back a little farther. Yeah, the Civil War was crazy because well, when they, yeah. that's when it was but, when they didn't have machinery. Yeah. That's I mean, blowing up someone from a thousand inches or miles away, however. I mean, I'm not savvy on that. Is one thing, but uh, the hand-to-hand -hand bayonet um, just slaughter. Well, that that's they what did. war was forever. Well, it, uh, I don't know. Swords it, and axes. It and just it, uh, American yeah. America having to deal with. It just seemed like it was, yeah. it, and, and that we learned about more. So we learned about uh, the Civil War, um, not the politics about it as much, which is very weird. But then again, I did go to a lightly colored school. Um, <laughs> so I knew there was a war, but no one really told me what it was about. 
Um, but uh, in watching those, you're just like, I mean, they're just some of the fights that were, and I can't name them right now that I sort of remember from um, the Civil War were just awful. And then the aftercare, you know, these guys wallowing in their own crap was uh, just, you know, and then... Uh, the doctors War, didn't know what to do about all those wounds. Oh, my God, they chop your leg off, I'll see you. You know... Um, still die of gangrene. Yeah, and then uh, then what was it? Uh, World War Two, or World War One, uh, India and Britain and all of that, nightmare on Elm Street. Uh -huh. um, World War Two was more savvy because, you know, now we have, like, really cool fighter pilots and... Uh, uh, but the Japanese were not nice to us, and we were not nice to them, which sort of sucked. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, I moved to America and I, grew, I was born in the Bronx, yet now you're stuck in a concentration camp here or holding something, they called them here, when Japan broke out. They just mm -hmm. shuffled everybody. Uncool. Totally uncool. Oh, yeah. Um, but the um, best thing about that, though, there people were bummed out about Japanese. We were looking at black people for a while, so it was cool. <laughs> um... But it just seems like, uh, you know, now, you know, you can destroy a city from, you know, miles away and never even see the destruction. But could you just mm -hmm. imagine Hiroshima? Could you just imagine that devastation? That just blows my mind that, that it happened. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And as a society, we're like a global society, yeah. we were like, oh, shit. Did, we shouldn't have done that. Did we just do that? Did we, that was a little worse than we thought shut it was going to be. Shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Our bad, you know. Yeah, like, so uh, it's not a good thing that happened. Yeah, that's so things like Thank that. Thank God we haven't done it again. Yeah, and that's pretty groovy. So it's it's hard to, um, maybe it's I I like living in the fantasy world because it mm -hmm. isn't. I mean, this reality is a trip. You know, when you start digging into it in the history books and yeah, everything. Yeah, I mean, looking into it and going, holy crap! I mean, um, to watch the Holocaust was just horrifying to me. I mean, I watched the series like, you know, that's when series came on and you watch them every night on TV, you know, like, yeah. like, oh, Shogun, Kojinewa, Anji-san. <laughs> oh, I love Shogun. Oh, Richard Chamberlain. Oh, he's very hot. He can Shogun me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to watch, like, those period pieces were cool, but they were fairly glamorized. Yeah. The Holocaust was not. No. I think that of all those type of pieces, that was one of the first ones to me that was not. Uh, I mean, it was like, Really? And then people are trying to say that it never happened. And like, really? Come on, you know. But people want to say the world's flat. Everyone wants to just deny. But it is. The science and everything like there that. There are. There is no. North Dakota. <laughs> you son of a bitch. There's a South Dakota. I don't think there's a North Dakota. They're lying. You fucking. Do you know anybody from North Dakota? No, I know people from South Dakota. <laughs> Never met anybody from North Dakota. There is no North Dakota. It's just there. It's just. It's just on the map, but it doesn't actually exist. It doesn't actually exist. Oh shit. It's like uh, Area 51. Yeah. So it's North Dakota. North Dakota. Cause there's nothing there, dude. <laughs> okay, I, I refuse to believe. Cause you, I mean, no one ever talks about North Dakota. What well, is in course, North Dakota? Cause is it Fargo like, in North Dakota? Is it? Is it Fargo? Is it, it's Fargo, North Dakota, I thought. <laughs> but then no one knows about Fargo, really. Right. You know, do we really believe it's there? It's just off. Yeah, it's just all nothing. There, yeah, it's not really there. That's just, yeah. That's just, oh, there, that space isn't even on the map. It's on the map, I don't know. They took away Pluto. I'm done with North Dakota. <laughs> okay? I did the little thing in school. Well, it was like... It was like they either add a bunch of plant, more planets that are equal, like planetoids mm -hmm. that are equal mass to Pluto, or they just take Pluto off and call it a planetoid along with the rest See, of the things floating so around uncool. out there. I did that when I was a kid. I had the whole, Pluto was the last one. Yeah. And it was like a, like a little dog, and you know, felt really bad because he was like farthest away, and they're probably really cold or, you know, living. Super in, cold. Super, you know, like North Dakota. Like North Dakota. Um, and then they just took it away and said, oh, it's on a planet. Okay. Sure. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just because uh, so many other planetoids, I guess, as, as uh, our ability to see out in space mm -hmm. and, uh, like, observe all the stuff floating around us became more and more advanced. Pluto is a planet. <laughs> It'll always be a planet to me, okay? <laughs> all right? Come on. They, there's a uh, Disney character uh, named Pluto. Right? Well, which, there was a god. Well, yeah. And he was, like, not one of the most favorite ones, but... 
Yeah, Pluto's will always be Pluto to me. Oh, and yeah. I don't like Disney, by the way, because Mickey Mouse is creepy with the little white hands. Can't take it. That's a little Anytime awful. I see the, the little white hands, I mean, he's, ooh, and he has that high voice like Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah, everybody's like, do you want to go to Disneyland? No. <laughs> no. Oh, I want, shit. Actually, I do want to go to Disneyland because they said yeah. No one can get through Disneyland in one day. So I want to walk straight through the park to the very end, from one end to the other, find Mickey Mouse, bitch slap him, and then leave. I totally did Disneyland in one day, but by myself. Okay. You can't go with a crowd of people. Did you bitch slap Mickey for me? I did a little bit. I smacked him on the butt. That's as close as, you know, I, I didn't So you got a thing about little mice with yeah. white hands then? Yeah, it was, it was pretty hot. a little creepy. It was pretty hot. Yeah, I no. just want to, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, Look, no, I just think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I just, it's just, it's one of those things that I can't deal with. You know, uh, I think a Japanese anime person should kill Mickey Mouse. That'd be fun. In a Japanese anime. Like, and just sword him off and just. Have you seen uh, Have you seen him on uh, South Park? The representation of Mickey Mouse on South Park. No. Nope. He's this evil, evil like businessman who just like crushes everyone's souls. See, it's hilarious. I don't like Mickey Mouse, and I didn't like Mister Rogers because deep down inside there was something wrong with that man. No one should be that happy. Yeah, he was like. Come a, on, kid. Wasn't uh, he like a war vet and stuff like that? I I don't. All I know is when he came on TV. I walked out of the room when I was a kid. I'm like, he just, the, who comes to work and changes into a sweater? Come on! <laughs> like, Did you see the movie Tom Hanks made? No, because I don't like him. The guy's a freak. It was such a weird movie. Thank and you. And it was like, no. there was some kind of scandal happening. I see? can't remember. And then uh, the movie just sort of ended. And I was like, what the fuck happened, though? Like, <laughs> Yeah, like, see, there's stuff about... For like another 20 minutes of this movie? It'll come out one day that, that uh, Mr. Rogers was uncool. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You know, everybody, he probably... Everybody has skeletons. He just... But, yeah, he just... But he was creepy. He was creepy to watch. I, for, I, I didn't like kiddie programs as a kid. I yeah. just didn't take them. I, I, I thought... Excuse me. I had belts. Sorry. Um, I thought uh, Roadrunner. Why? That was my thing. Why? <laughs> Mom and Dad, can you explain to me why he's uh, why he's so frustrated? You the know? coyote wants to eat some bird. Yeah, I got nothing. Coyotes you know? like birds. I was a kid. I, I was like, why? I mean, so, no. I didn't like cartoons. Yeah. I was terrible. I mean, I was a terrible kid. I didn't like Barbie. My mother, and to this day, it's her fault that I don't cook. <laughs> <laughs> she brought me an easy bake oven and I made my little first cake. I was very excited. And I put it in. And then I went in and took it out. And I burned my hand because nobody told me don't touch the light bulb. Um, <laughs> and uh, I said, Yeah, I'm done. And the easy bake oven, I think, got downplayed to my little sister and never learned to cook after that. I thought, Psh, no. Uh, if I'm going to burn myself when I cook, forget it. You are going to burn yourself when you cook. Yeah. So I, I literally cannot cook at all that's like one of the I things people that cook for a living like uh they'll have tiger stripes down their arms yeah. from so you can only put your hands in, in and out of the oven so many times before you go bop real quick and you're yeah. like son of a bitch yeah and then they get you know in 20 years of that and you're like oh look at that there's like yeah. a few of them up and down there no i won't uh i can't, I can't. it's sad that i can't i i think i'd like to learn how to cook and i think i i want to uh, get hypnotized to learn how to swim. You don't swim either? Uh, I sort of had an accident when I was 10, and um, uh, I made it back, yeah. let's put it that way. And uh, so I am uh, I'm aquaphobic. Yeah. I can't even take a bath. You gotta, you gotta I take a shower. Jump, you, gotta, you gotta jump right into no. that phobia. That's one of those no. things. It's too late for that. I have, um, I have vertigo, right? So that turned into like a fear of heights growing up. And I, I, I still have vertigo, like if I go up on high spaces. But I, I'll like put my head up against the window of like a really tall building and like pull my hands off and just go, fuck, 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 fuck. fuck. Oh, yeah. No. Like, <laughs> just deal with it for a second. No, water is, uh, it's just, it, I, I went to the beach. Yeah. Um, I was playing a gig, and we, you know, were waiting for the bus to come to get our stuff. And so I went up to the beach, and it was like, you know, I was in there. It's like the tide came in, and that freaks me out, the water, seeing it. So the tide came in, over my feet. Oh, that's not too bad. And the tide goes out. And goes, oh, oh, that's so bad. And the tide goes out. Oh, and I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm never. And I, uh, oh, yeah, water. 
I've gotten thrown into pools and became completely hysterical. Yeah, people, it's not funny to throw people in they pools. They don't. They don't believe it. They don't. And I'm like, so I think the only way that would work now is uh, if I get got hypnotized. But I'm afraid yeah. that if I get hypnotized, that someone's gonna say the word porcupine and I'm gonna start clucking like a pig or masturbating no. or something in public. Because you know somebody's gonna mess me with that. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, hypnotism is. It, it only works if you if you're like willing to work with it. I'm willing. Thing, right. So it's like. <sighs> There's certain suggestions that that just aren't going to trigger if if you're not uh, like willing to go along. Okay, but that's not to say that I wouldn't be willing to go along, but I don't want to be triggered by that. Yeah. I mean, you know, but yeah, I I told somebody, I said, yeah, just my luck. You say a word, next thing you know, I'm like in public, like rubbing on myself and stuff. And I'm like, I can't really have a knot. It's not like that. Like, uh, Not that I need a trigger word for that or anything. I used to work at hypnosis shows, and some of the people that would be on stage would be like, uh, like no, I felt like I was doing it. Like they, they're kind of a, they're aware of that they're doing it. You know, it's just like the suggestion that the willpower has been taken away and that you're not responsible for your actions at the moment allows them to be more free in the so moment. So you're not kind like hypnotizing me right now or anything, right? Huh? Always. <laughs> like, like, That's just what I did. I go around and hypnotize burf, everybody. Burf. Yeah. <laughs> I start barking. Uh, uh, but yeah, one day that's that's one of the things I want to learn how to cook and I want to learn how to swim. Other than that, um, I think I'm pretty. Pretty well rounded. Yeah. Not grounded. Very well rounded. Uh, so I can shoot a gun. Um, I would, I'd I like to do guns. archery. Archery's fun. And I'd love to learn how to fence. That's you know, also fun. Because that's just like the whole. Oh yeah, that'd be so cool. Fencing's um, a blast. Um, yeah, a friend of mine, her daughter, like did it like professionally and stuff, and she was like amazing at it. I would just love to just get out there and poke people. Ha. Ah. That's what I want to do. So, yeah, there's a bunch of things that I still... You would have thought now would be a great time, but no one can actually go do any of those things. Yeah, is, that's the bitch about it, well, right? Well, this is the first time I've been... Um, I was lucky that we got to work from home. So, in the um, second week of March was the... And it's amazing that it's taken me this long to bring up Supernatural, my favorite show in the whole world. Um, I went to the convention... <laughs> Um, and uh, it was the last convention, but it was a, a hands-off convention as far as, like, you spend money to take pictures with them, so, you know, I get all up in them and stuff. Oh, the one person, Jared Pedalecki, I love you. Um, <laughs> but um, they've gotten to know me over the years because I go to many of them, and uh, the very next week, Vegas basically shut down. So I was very lucky that I was able to go to that convention. It was the last one, and uh, they let us take our computers home. So, it's That's awesome. it's wonderful to work from home now because I have friends that will be listening to this. I'm not going to tell you what I wear when I'm working from home, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty groovy to do that. But for the most part, um, I probably was going out like once every two weeks, like to the store and. Um, pick up some booze and my prescription and you know one day I drove all the way to South Point and back um what? but th- yeah uh if it wasn't for today coming out here to the north south 40 yeah. or however they say We're it up uh, the south point yeah um I would have gone uh, a month and a half without buying gas and that's oh, wow. your fault now. I have to, I'm going to have to buy gas now. <laughs> I was, well, was going to try to make it till September 1st. You're welcome. You need to cycle that gas so, around a little bit in there. Um, yeah, now I'm going to buy gas. And it's so funny when I go to the store, I'm like, when did it go up or when did it go down? You know, because, you know, my, I'm, I'm at home. Um, my kitty cats try to keep me company uh, as much as they can. Um, I don't watch TV or anything while I'm working. <laughs> 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 Uh, but uh, since I'm an operational trainer, it's you know it's pretty groovy. To, I I do some teach some classes and go over documents. But usually the stereos pump in or there's Japanese anime. I, I mean I watched pretty much most of Death Note in like two days. Oh wow, um, yeah, that's what 37 episodes. Uh, yes, and I love that you know that. Um, at 22 points, whatever uh, a minute. I mean yeah. uh, an episode, which I re- I thought was very amazing that they are that short. But the first minute and 10 seconds is the intro music, and the last minute and 10 seconds is intro music uh, or outro music. And if you flip to the next episode, yeah. you might miss a piece. 
Yeah. I, oh, I was very mad that I have to. But oh, I didn't they have the little secret bit at the end yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I didn't want to sit through some of them because some of the songs were just like. Um, but uh, it was uh, gracious of the company to let us do that. And then they brought us back. They said, oh, uh, July 1st or the first week of July. And I was part of the first wave. Damn it. I was so mad. <laughs> just to have to put clothes. I mean, to, you know, wear a nice clothes again. I was always wearing clothes. I always wear clothes when I'm working, always. Um, and uh, we were there for two weeks, and they sent us back home. And they said, no, cases have gone up again. You guys got to go home. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Aw. You know, I mean, I, I was bummed out that cases went up, but yeah. there's not. I nice work to at, work from home. I work at 745. I get yeah. up at 730. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> like, you know, I take I take my shower on my lunch hour, <laughs> or I take a nap, there which you is go. lovely. Um, but uh, yeah, I I would like to publicly thank United Healthcare for letting their employees uh, work from home, and we are the healthcare providers. So um, I'm glad that we get to keep it together, so people that need us, you know, or need the insurance, can keep it together. So that's pretty mm -hmm. groovy. But when we went there, we did exactly what you were doing. You walk in, and they were like, squished me, and then they did my little yeah. thingy. And then, well, there's an app that they have us do that okay. we're supposed to, before we even get in the car, yeah. and uh, to say, do you have a this, this, this? And if you answer yes to any of them, um, uh, then you're, it says stay at home. Yeah. And then you open up a case, but you get paid. Uh, they're gracious enough that anybody in the company that contracted COVID uh, would still get a full salary while they were um, in quarantine. That's um, fantastic. So I thought that was pretty, pretty groovy. Of course, doing the app, sometimes I'm looking at it going, you know, when I was going back in the office going, well, I have been sneezing this morning. <laughs> like, <laughs> because like sneezing, sore throat, I'm like, hmm, but that's allergies. I'll never go to work. Yeah. But I couldn't do that. I mean, I knew I was fine. So like I said, I haven't, well, I guess it doesn't matter whether you've been out a lot or not. Yeah. Um, I think I've got, I went to one party. That was fun. Um, got to sing. That was really fun. Uh, was really terrible. I mean, <laughs> like, Mike Masonette, he knows we were called the, uh, we called ourselves Trainwreck. Okay. Uh, because none of us had played together before, and we got up and played. I mean, it was fun, but there was a couple times I just, we looked at each other and went, where are we? No clue. Trainwreck is uh, actually Kyle Gass's band from Tenacious D. Oh, really? You know Tenacious D? Yes. Uh, Lee, the guy that's on all the shows with them, and Kyle Gass have a band called See? Trainwreck. And, well, we were, because we hit a few things that were very <laughs> Trainwrecky, but we had a good time, but uh, everybody there seemed, you know, responsible, you know, I'm hoping. Um, uh, but going around, like I said, there's nothing to do. It's sort of a drag. I mean, seriously, uh -huh. a drag. Like, um, Lee, my significant other, no, I'm not a virgin anymore. Um, <laughs> he uh, he used to go to the movies every week. He'd go to the movies by himself every week, like me going on my trips. Yeah. He'd go to the movies every week, and it was like, for him not to do that, I'm like, I sort of miss that couple hours of freedom on the weekends. Go, <laughs> like, can you get out? I would always ask him, you got a movie? You going to movies today? He's like, no, I'm like, <laughs> like yeah. uh, And then we were at home together for like, two months. His company um, took them back in and it starts to wear on you when the only person that you see is that person and two cats. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit because it'd be like we're both, I'm in one room and he's in the other and um, my shift's over at 7.45 and, I'm um, sorry, 4.45, he's over at 5 and I would come out into the hall and say, uh, see you at home. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I'm leaving more because see you at home and I'd truck out every three-story townhouse. Get on the couch, and I'm home, you know, and it was like, but he's the only person that we saw, and I saw, and it was just like, I know I'm a bit of a freak, so sometimes I can come across a little hyper, uh -huh. and he don't really get it sometimes, so, and I'm waiting for a response, but I'm not getting one, so I'm not getting that interchange, <laughs> <sighs> and it's like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm grumpy, <laughs> um, uh... and I, 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 I know he loves me and it's cool, but there was times I just wanted to wring his neck because it was just like, I have no one to play with. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You know, at least at work, I, I moved around and I had my people that I'd walk over to the desk and we'd crack jokes and talk about whatever. There's only a couple people that are really cool there that I can do that with. And sitting at home, it's like, 
I roll out of bed and roll onto my computer, and then I roll off my computer and I go downstairs, and then there he is. And I'm like, that's it. So I'm glad he went back to work. So I do have my eight hours to myself. Um, but it's still a little weird, you know, going outside, smoking a cigarette, going, what am I going to do today? Yeah. I've got fat. Um, and I haven't eaten. Yeah, fat. I think I am. But I haven't eaten anymore. I'm uh, in the first, in the beginning, yeah. yeah, I was eating a lot more. Um, but like, I'll eat spoons full of peanut butter as opposed to, you know, <coughs> lunch. You know, um, but it's, I'm not, um, what's the word I want to use? I'm not ambulatory. I'm not. Yeah, you're not moving around. Yeah, I'm not moving around. So that's, you know, yeah, you're upstairs, you're sitting. So you be boxes. proud of me. I bought a cycler for under my desk. Oh, nice. So, and because I, as you can see, I move around constantly. Oh. So it's really cool to have that under there when I'm working on something. Because I noticed one day I was like, wow, you're really <laughs> sort of gone. And I just got it like Getting a week it. ago. But, um, so that, I mean, that's, you know, and three story townhouse, 28 stairs, dude, to right? smoke a cigarette. So it's like you smoke a cigarette and then you come upstairs and you're like, <gasps> and you're like, oh, wow, this is sort of missing the point. <laughs> I'm here. Good, like, <laughs> good motivator to keep you from smoking, that's for sure. Not that good. Uh, ah. <laughs> not that good, but uh, yeah, but yeah, we, so it's just. smoking outside as well and it's been, it's been keeping my smoking down. Well, we smoke in the garage, oh, yeah. but it's still, still hot. It's just, it's not fun. To smoke uh, outside or in the garage during the summer. It's no. just not. Even when we were vamped going out on the balcony, it was like, <sighs> okay, it's great. I'm going back in. So sometimes I get like two puffs in and then I come in up the stairs and then go, oh my God, I came all the way downstairs for two puffs. <sighs> so I bought a blue <laughs> oh, did for like you? a minute. So that was sort of cool. And I, you know, I'm working. But then I said, I, I can't do this because I don't smoke. See, our company is non smoking. Yeah. So I don't even, I don't have a cigarette from eight to five. That's good. Every day, well, you know, now I'm at home now, but yeah, I didn't have a cigarette from eight to five. I just had the morning cigarette, you know, three miles away, tunes, and then the cigarette home. If it takes more than one cigarette, there's traffic, you yeah. know. So, and uh, so yeah, and then uh, but being at home, I can honestly say that we are smoking more. Um, but I'll have to, I gotta break off of that. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, going out and seeing people, um, Cassie Stone, uh, she was playing at the Tuscany a couple weeks ago. So I went to see her, which was really groovy. Um, you know, it was very limited seating, and it was really cool because the band was literally six feet away from each other. Um, and uh, she called me up to do a song, and that was really fun. It's not on Facebook? Yeah, oh, it's on my Facebook. Is it? Oh, yes, find it, it real quick. Um, it was fun to do. Uh, I forgot how much I missed performing, you know. Um, so, like I said, us musicians, or the real musicians, um, hold tight, guys. We'll be back soon. At the Tuscany last night. Mary Crayon. That's cool. Is this it right here? Yeah. Got their masks on. Yeah, yeah. The masks on. Yeah, everybody's sitting around and there's plexiglass. And look, as you can see, the band is like way over there and one's over there. <laughs> All right, you got stanchions. So wait, is that what that is, or is that for? Yeah, that's the the drummer up there and Cassie sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Cassie. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was groovy to to do it again for like a minute. So. um uh, I appreciate Cassie. I love you, Cassie. Um, so there's a couple venues that are doing music. So um, just can't do it our way. But why can't we have, you know, rock shows at Vamped and they just videotape it and people can see it? Right. So we can it still It just costs play. a lot of money. <laughs> well. Turn yeah, all those lights on and all that power on. Well, they can pay for shows online. Right. You know, like the football and the baseball. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. People, I asked them when they were watching the hockey game, and I'm like, but there's, do they have, like, fake? <sighs> I mean, how, how do you think those guys feel driving around in there and not hearing the roar of the fans or the crowd? Right, it, must, it must feel like practice or something like that. Yeah. You know? like so are they really giving it their all? Yeah. Mm. 
And like when football comes back, uh, now that I'm a huge sports fan, but uh, I think they, like some of the stadiums are known for how much noise they make against the other team. Right, like European football. Yeah. So that's just crazy. European football is like way crazier than ours. And, and those, I mean, they, they riot, they fight, they kill each other. It's fabulous. Oh, yeah. um, and I could just, I can't imagine, you know, uh, it, the rugby matches, any of those, I can't imagine. And, and how are they allowed to be have contact and we're not? <laughs> well, they're. I'm sure they're testing them for COVID and then sending them out on the field. Everybody got tested. Everybody's clean. Well, Let's do this. We like anybody it's like that, the UFC. So why can't we come into a club and everybody get their little temperature and have a mask and you know? Please soon. I know you said no politics, but it'll probably be right after November third. I know. Woo. You know, right but, after the, the then everybody stops playing games I, with all the, our money. And I wish we can get it back hadn't been earlier because they have and um, Creation Entertainment uh, does all of the conventions for you know um, Star Trek and all those oh, yeah. and Supernatural, my favorite show in the whole world. Love you, Jared. Um, Jared, here I'll show you. He's oh, my boyfriend. Sh- I love him. <laughs> I love him so much. I'm sorry, honey, but it's true. Jared Padalecki. Oh, yeah. See that, Jared? Ooh, he's so pretty. Um, uh, they have conventions. So I go to them, four or five of them a year, in different cities. And I go alone. Uh, a couple places I'll get gigs at. Um, other places, it's just me. And um, uh, the last three years, it's been uh, New York, New Jersey. And uh, I've spent, like, the whole day in Manhattan and just roam around the subways and blah, blah, and then I go to the convention, and it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and it's, it's amazing. Um, I've learned, and I love, I love walking when I, I, anywhere I go. I make sure for the convention-wise, I'm close by, and then I walk everywhere else. So I did New York, at Burbank, um, but my favorite has been New Orleans. And the first time I went for a supernatural convention in New Orleans was three years ago. Um, New Orleans, NOLA. Uh, and I, six days, you know, in the city, completely alone. I, don't know anybody, uh, but I'm going to the convention, and I got off the plane and got my shuttle and got to my hotel and <sighs> started walking out in the streets. And it's about two in the morning, and I asked uh, the desk, "Where could I, you know, get a drink and some food?" Oh, right down the street. So I walked and then I ate my food. And I read the paper and just slowly got plastered till like <laughs> five in the morning. Um, Sitting there by myself, talking to the bartender and the waitresses and stuff, and it was cool, and I waddled back to my room, um, but enjoyed it. Um, ran around uh, in the back streets of cities. It, uh, it didn't take me until my second time to find the dungeon, the dungeon, which is like an amazing, like, you walk in, and whatever music you want, uh-huh. if you want uh, Nine Inch Nails, if you want Pantera, whatever, and it's blaring, and there's cages and multi-levels, and that's all we can say. Because they say no pictures, no video, the dungeon. I did take a picture of me in a coffin there, and they, they let me do that. But um, um, the first time, it was oh it was am- amazing, amazing, amazing. And uh, uh, Danny Wilde, you know Danny Wilde? Uh, maybe, singer? Maybe. Yeah, blonde dude, singer. Um, uh, amazing cat. Um, he uh, actually texted me and said, hey... Uh, my friends are playing on Bourbon Street, excuse me, playing on Bourbon Street, and uh, their lead singer is going to be late. Can you go down and jam with them? I'm like, Ooh. Dude, no. number one, I'm on vacation. Okay. Yeah. I'm on vacation. Is that the dungeon? It's hard to see. Uh, actually, I don't have my glasses on, but uh, it's that's okay. probably the dungeon. It's yeah. probably the dungeon. It says, I think it is. It's yeah. Dungeon New Orleans. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> like, um, and so it's, and it's 8 o'clock. Who plays at 8 o'clock in Vegas? No one. Yeah. I said, well, fine. I said, I'll go down there and look at their set list. He sent it to me, and I was like, I'll do a couple of songs. Now, it's Bourbon Street, you know, in a club, and places packed, drunken people, and, you know, you're walking. And I got my phone, and I'm trying to map quest where I'm going, la, la, la. And I look up, and this guy walks by me. And I was like, and it's him. <laughs> All by himself. <laughs> oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So I start chasing him, of course. Um, stalker that I am. And he has earbuds on. And I'm like, Jared, Jared, Jared. So finally, I, I catch up to him because he's six foot four and a half. So he's got that long stride. Yeah. So I touch him on the shoulder. Tap, tap, tap. And it, now I have met amazing musicians. I have played with some of the greatest artists in the world. And it's like, cool. And meeting him, it's like blubber on toast. I'm just like, ah, hi, my name's Mary. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think you're really great. I, I love the show, and I'm gonna see you tomorrow. I bought a picture, two hundred dollars to get each photo. Yeah. I'm like, ah. and he goes, and he's holding my hand the whole time, and I'm like, ah. um. And he goes, well, I'll see you tomorrow. And I'm like, <laughs> and uh, not, hey, let's do a selfie. I can't think of anything. Can I yeah. hug you? Can I give you a big kiss on the lips? Nothing. I'm like, <sighs> and so he walks away. I'm torrentially crying as I'm walking down the street and calling my friend. <laughs> I get on stage and I bust out songs. I'm so excited because I just met him. Um, so it was, it was the coolest thing. And then the next day I went to the invention and I was in line and, uh, and I'm like, do you remember me? And he's like, Bourbon Street, right? I'm like, ah, I've lost my mind again. I might have peed myself a little. I don't know. Um, so that was my first excursion into uh, New Orleans. And then next year I went back. There was no convention. But uh, six days of nutso facto, um, you know, drinking at breakfast. <laughs> um, um, I, I got there, I tried to get a flight that, uh, oh, this flight got in at like nine in the morning and my hotel's a smaller, older one. It was, it's really, it was really cool. I don't go to that one anymore. And uh, I was like, oh, I'm here. And they were like, yeah, your rooms aren't going to be ready till four. I'm like, yeah, you sort of. I love that game. Get me in a little right now. I said, okay, I'm yep. just going to be down the street. So I went down the street to the bar that I would hung up before. They remembered me. They actually bought tonic for me. I had tonic the entire time I was there because I would go there uh, on my way home from wherever I was every night and get breakfast, you know, for the six days. So, um, so I walk in, I'm like, ah, you guys remember me? Oh, you're that girl from uh, Vegas. Uh, get some tonic, you know. It was an older couple that owned it, so it was very personable, you know, and the food that they gave was like your mom would have made breakfast, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, cool bar and drinks were like $5 for a big, you know, and strong. So, I, you know, it's 9 in the morning and I'm like sucking down you know, drink after drink after drink, and I'm eating, and I'm reading through the paper to see what I'm going to see, and um, there's a big voodoo fest every year that I seem to miss every friggin' year, like Guns N' Roses played last year, and I got there the next night. Oh, no. Yeah, and my friend Richard Ford is, is the guitarist with them now, and I'm like, oh, I was just there. Um, so I totally smashed at about 1 o'clock. I mean, I drank heavy till like one. So I waddled back and I went to everyone there. You guys got my room ready? No, not until, uh, not till four. I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm just gonna sit here then. <laughs> so like within an hour, we got your room ready. Yeah, damn Thought right. You would <laughs> like, because I guess they didn't want to see this person, this homeless woman <laughs> sitting in the lounge, um, uh, you're drunk as a skunk and sleeping. So they got me a room. So that was cool. And then. Uh, Last year, I went, um, and I met this really cool cat, um, homeless guy, um, a little older than me, uh, but a great artist. So I bought some art from him, and I bought a real cool voodoo doll that I'm not sure how he absconded it, but very cool voodoo doll uh, that I got at a good price. And uh, I took him to breakfast, and we talked, and then uh, I, uh, uh, he... I uh, said, oh, I'll walk you back. Um, Kyle, um, singer Kyle, uh, Brian Adams Kyle. Brian Adams Kyle. He does Brian Adams. He does Foreigner. Yeah. He's singer Kyle. Um, I love you, Kyle. Can't think of your last name right now because I'm stupid. Um, <laughs> his wife's family owned a really cool, it's like a punk restaurant bar. But it's in like in the back, you know, it's like Bourbon Street and like all the way around. So, uh, and it's a good 15 minute walk, you know. At three in the morning, alone, uh, which I did most of the time by myself until I met this cool coot dude. Um, but like I said, I bought art and I uh, um, bought him breakfast when I could, and you know he wasn't really a drinker. But it's really interesting to meet him. Um, that's the cool thing about New Orleans. Um, wow, I couldn't find it, huh? Uh, I don't see. I don't see. Wow, Kyle you're Singer. just. I don't know what you're looking at, dude, I'm but you looking, are. I'm just typing Kyle on You Facebook. are not the coolest dude. I'm not. Uh, because I, everybody else would have found it, like, immediately. Okay, so. <laughs> He's like, I found it. Um, Maybe look at I'm not friends with Kyle him. Frost. Yeah, that's not popping. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's way down here at the bottom of the list. I oh, would have yeah. gotten to him eventually. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Kyle. Yeah. So, yeah. So, his family... Um, uh, it was so funny because he kept telling me, you just go there. Guy. Yeah. Yes, he's amazing. He's an amazing singer. Yeah, he did Bohemian Rhapsody with us, me and him and Cassie okay. and them, you know. 
Um, I'm better with faces. Oh, yeah, me too. I suck everybody, at the name thing. Everybody's dude and sweetie. Yeah, exactly. Especially dude in a nightclub, sick. right? You're yeah. like, you're just, it's too many people. Dude and sweetie. I'm at 30 people tonight. Yeah. I'm not going to remember your friggin' name. But names. it's really funny is I may not remember your name, but I can remember where I met you, what you were wearing, and what we were talking about. Totally. Yeah. Your face. Yeah. yeah. See and your face. Like, oh, oh, I know you <laughs> from somewhere. So, but then it's usually sweetie darling. Yeah. Or a lot is... Um, Unfortunate to say, maybe it's because I'm getting old and losing my brain, but I've had a few people. I had a couple people walk up to me in New Orleans and said, uh, you're from Vegas, right? It was first, you know, stalker. Yeah. Go, no, no, we've seen you play at that club, blah, blah, blah. You're great singing your menace. Remember, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah. No clue. <laughs> But you know, that's how it goes. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be mean and go, I don't know who you are. Yes, come here, give me a little. Yeah. And I, and now yeah. my friend of mine was there. She goes, who's that? I go, no clue. Yeah. Never. I, I, that face didn't even register, you know. But um, you get they that. They might have just seen you perform, though, yeah, too. Yeah, you know. Um, but if they say, you remember me, and we talked about yeah. this, we smoked a whatever, didn't. Um, like, or I used to, my big thing was when guys would say, hey, do you remember me? And I go, did we have sex, do coke, or do I owe you money? <laughs> you know, so, um, or all three. You're like, oh, man, okay, so maybe I don't remember. So then I don't remember. Yeah, mm, no, sorry. No, Was it the 90s? Yeah, not so much. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't remember much about that. But, uh, but yeah, so new, going to New Orleans, I'm really bummed out about this year um, because there was Super Cat Natural Convention the week before Thanksgiving. So they've canceled everyone, you know, down the line since yeah. March. This was the last one, and it was still going strong until Monday. Oh, no. Yeah. So they, yeah, it's canceled. They postponed it to the 2021. <laughs> so oh. I won't get to see Jared at all this year. So, And this is the 15th season, and it's the end of the last season. 15 seasons? It went 15 seasons. Anything is super yeah. impressive. 2005, I remember I had a new band called Just a Balance, uh, and... I was writing songs, and everything I did was in 7-8 time, so I've never written in 7-8 oh, time. God. So I had a really crappy rehearsal, and I felt, ah, this is not going to work. Uh, it ended up, Bob Ferrari did our first album, so did, we, they, I wrote in 7-8 time, which is crazy to do. Um, and uh, so I got home, and I'm like, ah. Now, back in 2005, um, most uh, sci-fi and that type of television show was not popular except on sci-fi channel and then most of those didn't last very long everything was only you know like a, a year a season uh, half a season especially sci-fi yeah and so it was all uh procedural cop shows and you know medical shows and they weren't into um um reality yet reality tv wasn't on, but it was all you know the crappy csi csi 1 csi 6 csi 19 you know yeah. all of those so i'm like how oh, supernatural oh right, let's give it a try so I'm laying there in bed, I'm watching it, and they don't use the song in it anymore when they do it, which is crazy, but I swear to God, I thought it was a nice shot that was playing. And the lead character ran into an alley, and I haven't seen the boys yet. I haven't seen this guy yet, you know. <laughs> I haven't seen him. And he starts ripping his flesh off. He's a shapeshifter. So they're showing his teeth popping out, you know, uh, ripping the skin off and his bones breaking. And I'm oh, like, creepy. And I'm like, huh? Did you see that to me? I was like, I want this. Yeah. I, I love this show already. I didn't even see how gorgeous these guys were. Um, I'm like, this is, the, this is mainstream television. So this was the uh, WB. Oh, wow. So they made it through their first season, and I watched it, and I was like, wow, this is great. And then they got picked up second, and then there was the big strike the third one and then there was a bunch of shows like Moonlight was a vampire show that was amazing uh, the guy ended up playing Hawaii Five-0 um, but that only lasted you know, six, 20, uh, 16 episodes because they had the strike uh, Supernatural only did 16 because they did 23 every year so they didn't think they were going to picked up and then season 4 came and 5 and 6 15 it's the 15th season they were 22 and 26 oh, and wow. now and I mean and the, uh, Jared was on Gilmore Girls yeah, I can't watch it now because it's sort of pedophilic, <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> I feel bad, you know, I can watch him as an adult, but not kill more girls because that would make me pedophilic because he's a teenager and that's <laughs> just wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so this last season, I thought, well, this is great. Um, Jensen is going to uh, do, in case you guys aren't familiar with Supernatural, two guys, brothers, roam the country, uh, 
fighting uh, evil and shapeshifters, Wendigos, vampires. Um, then they get into the whole religion thing. Um, angels show up. Uh, Lucifer, yeah, a couple of them get up. They die several times and come back. God shows up. Now it's going to be the protagonist. It's crazy. Last season, um, uh, Jensen, the older brother, is going to go season three of The Boys. I don't know if you've seen the boys oh, the on Amazon. Oh, the superhero movie yes. or show. Yeah, Which yeah, yeah. Which made me never want to let anyone eat down there again when I'm in a bad mood. Oh. Did you see that scene? I don't. I don't know what you know. I don't think I saw oh, that scene. Super, yet. I watched the first few episodes of superhero the boys. woman. Uh huh. Letting a guy do a thing. Uh huh. Having her moment, crushed his head. Oh really? And they should. And it's just yeah, crushed his head. Yeah, the other stuff I saw in there was pretty bloody, so I'm sure yeah. they had fun with that. Yeah, so, because we're all yeah. like, oh, you know, so, uh, but, uh, so he'll be on the, season two starts Tuesday. Of The Boys? Yeah. Oh, cool. And then, so, Jensen Eccles is going to be Soldier Boy, which I guess is one of the first comic, um, comic book uh, persons, I'm not a big comic book person, but he's going to be uh, Soldier Boy, which is a superhero, and Jared, it's the love of my life. Um, his picture's not even there anymore. Um, he is actually rebooting Walker. Walker, Texas Ranger. Is he really? Yes. Chuck Norris? So he's going to be a modern-day Walker. That's fantastic. Yes. I actually used to watch I love Chuck that Norris show. on Walker, Walker yes. Texas Ranger when so I was So it'll be interesting to see how so they start filming on <laughs> That's that. That's so funny. Um, it's good to see the television, um, the industry is uh, coming back as well. Um, they went to Vancouver, did the whole 14-day quarantine. And they just, uh, they were, they only had two episodes left, 326 and 327. And they just finished 326, and they're about to finish 327. But uh -huh. they're filming, and then it's over. I mean, I, you know, I grew up with these kids, you know what I'm saying? It's like, and they grew up with us 15 years. That's like forever on a television show. Yeah. Um, and to be so young, and when they first came out, they were like, you know, nice boys. Well, not nice boys, but... Um, and now they all have three kids, and one owns a brewery, and uh, uh, the other one owns two nightclubs in Austin, Texas, and their families are together. And it's, um, I, I've never, I would love to have experienced that type of um, friendship and work with someone for 15 years. You know, that was, I've never been in a band that long. Um, I know, I, I went back for a reunion show in St. Louis uh, three years ago, Mississippi Nights, because they eventually closed. Um, so we went back for a reunion show, so all the bands that played in the 80s, um, we all went, a bunch of us went back, and I got called by one of my first real bands, um, uh, Big Fun, we were Big Fun. <laughs> um, the White Rabbit, when I did all the thing, that band. That was Big Fun. Yeah, and uh, so they flew me back, and, uh, you know, paid for a really nice room, and. Um, I didn't get to rehearse, but I knew the song. And uh, Richard from Guns N' Roses, uh, his band, The Eyes, were playing back then when I was playing. That's why we know each other really well. He's just an amazing guitarist. Richard, uh, I'm just, I'm so proud of him. Um, he made it. I didn't. Um, and uh, so that's uh, some of the oldest musician people that I know that I've still worked with. But other than that, um, to be that close for 15 years with someone and their family and watch them grow up. Um, it must, uh, to me, it, it would be amazing, you know. Uh, and the bands that are still rocking after ever, that are still together, it's still amazing to me. And it's funny because the, the other bands, the older bands that came out back then, the majority of them, you know, they'll have the reprisals. Um, I was really cute before I got in the car today, so. Um, you look great, Mary. Sweat it all out. Um, the older bands, uh, they're all together. They stay together, you know. Yeah. You know, the Stones and the Who and, you know, whoever didn't die. Um, uh, and I, the, the music of the newest, the new people coming out today, I don't think any of that's going to be remembered. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody knows legendary um, artists. They know Rolling Stones songs. They know Zeppelin tunes. You know, you just, no matter what, you just do. Um, and those guys can still play and pack a house. Um, really, the Fall Out Boys are going to be able to do that? Mm. No, you know, and there's certain ones that like uh, that survive the 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 test of time, and that are still around, but they're few and far between. You know? Yeah, and, and then they're dying. Yeah. So I'm really I'm I'm curious to see 
um, what the music's going to be like in the next 10 years. Because I, I got a nice span of everything, you know. Um, I liked big band music. Uh, even though I wasn't born, I was not born in the 40s. Um, but, uh, and I liked some of the 50s music, and the 60s was, like, totally groovy. I'm really bummed out that I missed that. Um, I remember when MTV, their first night, and now we were at a fraternity thing, and we were like, oh, you know, it was like, wow. I fell in love with Billy Idol, because <laughs> like, they all played that video, like, every hour. Yeah. Um, um, and then I got into all of the 80s craziness music, and um, I discovered heavy metal late 80s. Um, and then uh, grunge, and, ugh, uh, Chris Cardell, one of the most amazing voices, but he was really horrible when he started. Um, but one of the most amazing voices, I, I, he, he opened for, they opened for Nine Inch Nails. Oh, cool. Here at the Latin. And that was first time, the first time I'd seen him. So I got to see him before he passed away. With Soundgarden um, or Audio Slave? Soundgarden. Um, so that was really groovy, and then, so that was like the 90s, and you know, we grunged out, and um, it was so funny, because in the 80s, we all, women, we, we dressed, you know, I always had, you know, everything matched, and you know, we were cool, and then come the friggin' 90s, and it's like, jeans Flannel, and t-shirt, flannel and jeans, we didn't have to care, and, and it was so funny, because for the longest time, I would not wear jeans on stage. Yeah. I was just like, I, I can't do it. You know, I have to wear some sort of really cool slacks and some great boots and blah, blah. And then after all, it's like, I'm just rocking. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not that important anymore. So we survived the 90s. Don't remember much of it, so I guess I survived it. I did get married in the 90s twice. So yeah. <laughs> interesting decade. Um, and then uh, the music uh, sort of dulled after that. There wasn't anything to me like in 2000, there wasn't anything crazy new you know grabbing you well yeah i mean you got like i said you had all the periods in the 90s grunge and then what do we say about 2000 yeah well it's it it kind of turned into that in like uh in industrial is not the right word for it but like that rock and roll sound that always had tracks behind it keywords and stuff like that and there really weren't any like guitar leads stuff like that there weren't any guitar leads for a no, long time nobody wanted right. to hear guitar solos anymore and it was then like, get rid of all that shit and then uh, uh the band rap really took over like yeah and see i totally missed that part um totally just blew that one out of my head because yeah, i yeah, the hip-hop really became a big thing in the pop field yeah. and, and it, it took it took i think that's of genres stage. that's one of the only ones that i did not trip onto it's yeah. just now maybe it's because i'm a vocalist and it, my art is singing so if someone is speaking over it uh, huh yeah. it's like it doesn't do anything for me because i'm a singer you know so i might get that hook but you record that one time they loop it and you're done so it's not that much fun um so, uh, but the point of it was not getting stuck in any era or genre. I mean, I've, I've crushed and moved on with all of the tunage that's, you know, I mean, I can go see Whitesnake now, but I'll um, go see uh, Nine Inch Nails or I'll go see uh, Kill Switch Engaged or Avenged Sevenfold or oh, Seven Dust, Love Them Disturbed. Just, you know, it's... And all within a week and then go see yes you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like but there's a lot of uh people or musicians that i know that sort of got squared into a certain genre and they won't come out of it and it's like dude there's so much more my metal friends are all really like that right it's like it's metal or nothing and i i actually have a friend my buddy ray uh who was on the show uh he loves metal and i go up there to oregon and i get a tattoo and we uh we chill and like go into nature and shit but the whole time he's listening to fucking hardcore metal <laughs> and uh like death metal and shit oh nice and I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not complaining but it's just uh it's, it it's can be a bit funny because they were up there like relaxing and right. chilling and he's like, and it's like, yeah, uh, man, it's fucking smoking weed. I call it Cookie Monster yeah. music, you know, because you do sound like the Cookie Monster when you're singing it. Um, but I like the music behind um, the heavy metal and death metal. Um, not as much the vocals, because yeah. I'm, I don't sing like that. <laughs> I, can't. I mean, you think I'm Lucifer's little sister now, dude? Can you see me up there? <laughs> uh, that'd be awesome. I can't um, see what they're doing it. Yeah, I mean, so could I. <laughs> You got the 666 out of your arm, you know, you're, you're right there. You got this freaking uh, one of DSI's album covers. Uh, and, and it's so funny because someone looked at it and went, oh, is that Biohazard? I'm like, 
biohazard? No. <laughs> okay. Do you know what the biohazard sign looks like? Obviously you don't, so you'll probably end up dying uh, one day because you won't know what it looks like. Um, that's the mark of the beast. It's, and it's so funny because I went home. My mom, she's fine now. She had a stroke, so I flew back to St. Louis. My whole family's there. Yeah. She had a stroke, and I went back, and I had just got this tattoo, right? She's like, motherfucker. Ah, mom would never say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in her hotel room. I'm in her hotel room, her um hospital room and I have my leather on she's like well take your leather jacket off I'm like okay <laughs> and so I take my leather off and uh, she's like what's that on your arm and I'm like oh it's tattoo oh well, what's it what's it say I'm like uh it's a couple sixes <laughs> she goes because she's real Catholic she goes six 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 I go eh. And she looked at me, and she's like, and then my older sister, born again Christian, uh -huh. used to be a stripper. She's like, oh, you're going to hell. <laughs> you're going to hell. Like, okay. Yeah, I said, well, don't come to my condo because you locked your keys out of yours because you're going to be there too. Yeah. Um, so the priest walks in. That's our family priest for years and years and years. Um, it's a bit of a teetotaler. Uh, so he's like, okay, well, I'm going to like, give a blah, blah, blah. Because uh, first, uh, let me get the oil. And I'm like, I'm starting to sweat. I'm like, could you? He goes, what? I go, I, please don't. I'm a Luciferian now. He goes, what? I go, if you touch me with that, I'm going to burn. <laughs> and he was like, but I'm literally starting to sweat just with him. You know, and I know it's psycho, whatever. But And then he's like, the holy water. I'm like, do not sprinkle that on me, dude. You know, because he's like, dosing it around. And I'm, I'm sure he had a couple before. And I'm like, uh, so my mom was not happy with that. She goes, well, what's that one? I'm like, oh, that's just Japanese. <laughs> and she goes, what's it? vampire? Oh, my God. And I have bite marks on my neck. And so she's just like, what is wrong with you? Because I'm the only one Expressive. that. Expressive. I'm the only one that left. Everybody yeah. is within like 10 or 15 minutes from my mom's house. Oh, uh, okay. In St. Louis. And they've been there forever. And they lived in my, the house 40 years, I think. Oh, wow. Same house, yeah. My parents bought it in 1972. Right when we moved from the dark side to the side. <laughs> um, uh, you know, just like Jefferson's, dude. Uh, Moving on up, you know. And my dad was exactly like George Jefferson. So just, it was crazy. Um, but, yeah, I just, uh, I had, Missouri's pretty. Yeah. Um, but the rock scene, when I started really listening to rock in the late 80s, um, wasn't happening. Yeah. It was all, uh, wasn't a lot of original bands. Everybody played covers. Uh, and a friend of mine lived here, and she's like, oh, you got to come out here. So I started reading the paper every day because I worked at a magazine store um, part-time. And I'd read the paper every day, and, and I'd see the ads, Calamity Janes with Slaughter. And I'm like, oh, my God, i got to move there, you know. <laughs> um, so I, did, I finally moved here in 91. And uh, Calamity Janes shut down. I'm like, uh... But we still had like uh, Shark Club and Club Rock yeah. and, uh, you know, really fun places to play. And there was a lot more live music. And the bands were had a great camaraderie back then. You know, um, it seemed like everybody was friends with each other and we weren't, you know, better than and stuff. And uh, so it was fun to, to move around. Um, but it took a little bit for people to realize I was serious. Yeah. Because, you know, Mary... In Club Rock, sitting alone, drinking, <laughs> looking pretty. Sort of got the attention of a few people in the wrong way. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. So finally the bartenders got to know me. So they would hush people off or out of the way when they came over, um, you know, wanting to buy me a drink and whatnot. <laughs> like, no, she's here to sing. Yeah, but, I, you know, I was telling people, I'm a singer, I'm a singer, I'm a singer. Nobody knows me. It's Vegas. I'm like, yeah. I'm starting to get a little discouraged. And then... I sit there one day, and I hear this girl go, that's Mary Big Fun. And I was like, whoa. And uh, she's a stripper. And she uh, was dating Louis Prima Jr. And Louis Prima Sr. was the one that wrote the Jungle Book song, you know, I Ain't Got Nobody, Nobody yeah. Cares For Me. So his son had a heavy metal band here called Problem Child. I mean, really, I mean, he, you know. And uh, she goes, yeah, hey, yeah, she's a great singer. And I met Louis, and he hired me as a as their backup singer, and that was like my start, my first gig here, and we played everywhere, and it was so fun, and you know, just, yeah, it, it was groovy. I mean, it was like a really good experience, and from that, um, the guys from Leonard Skinner's camp saw me, 
and they say, hey, how would you like to... Oh, no, I think there was an, another band, Kinky Stunt, yeah. not Stinky Cunt, Kinky Stunt. <laughs> um, that's when I got to... Uh, um, I was playing with them, and then their... Uh, um, Leonard Skinner's camp saw me and said, hey, we need a backup singer for Jimmy. And I was like, cool. So I, so I meet him, and he's sitting there, got his little hat on, again. So they started playing Sweet Home Alabama, and, you know, I'd never sung a song before, but I knew it, you know, yeah. and did the harmonies. They're like, okay, you're hired. And then, so I toured around with them, still held on a job, going back and forth. Um, I had two bands at one time. <laughs> that was fun, Kiki Stunt and Jimmy, and I had two shows, one of each of them, and one night here in Vegas, so it was really fun. Um, and then uh, James Brown's camp saw me. Oh. I knew Tommy Ray Brown from here for like a little bit. I love Tommy. We got to have her on. The um, show. Oh, I love her to death. And but it was so funny because when I moved here, people told her things about me. Yeah. And told me things about her, and we'd never met. So we finally met one day, uh, at some bar downtown, and she's like, "Well, people are telling me that you think I'm this," and I'm like, "I'm not." And then they said, "I said this," and then. <laughs> it was fun. Like, what? What are, you, what are you trying to tell me? Oh, I was just trying to say we got, uh, we're running out of time. Oh, you said that I could bring a sleeping bag. Well, you can hang out all you want, but I but, only have two hours of tape on oh, this Oh, wow. Okay, not for now. Met her, and it was really cool. And uh, don't listen to people when they try to blow shit up your ass and tell you that other people are saying things. We would have never been friends. Oh, yeah, because so, people were talking shit yeah. for you, right? Yeah, and I never met her, but we were both rockers in town, and so people just tried to pit us against each other and sort of sucked. But then I got to be her. A lot I got to I end up being her backup singer, and uh, my first gig was at San Jose Coliseum opening or playing. Chubby Checker and them yeah. was there, and then James Brown, and then us, and it, well, us and then him. But it was it's really cool. So Vegas has been belly, belly good to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a great city. It's, it's a great place to live. It's, uh, you can run into the weirdest people and um, it turn out to have the best time. Yeah, it can be nuts and you can lose your ass, but um, as a musician, I think we're, what, after, well, before this happened, we were starting to, you know, people, the originals and people were getting back into that and it wasn't all straight bands playing all Iron Maiden or all blah blah. People were diversifying. Yeah. Even our band, The Remains, we <laughs> took me all two hours to get back to us. Um, we <laughs> play things. We'll play a Ninety Snails song. Then we'll play Chicago. Then we'll play Foo Fighters. And then uh, I'll do Heaven and Hell. Uh, just a different, you know, White Rabbit. Anything that we liked and we always thought was a cool song, but didn't fit. Yeah. You know. So people will come out and they get at least one. One song a night, I tell people during the show, you're going to have one song that you're like, yes, I can't believe they believe, played it. And they do. And it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, come see me. I, I love coming and seeing you. And I think we might be even singing together soon. Because so. we're going to Japanese anime, too. Right? Look. So, uh, but yeah, I would love to uh, say thank you very much to my <laughs> guest, Mary Kriya. You have been amazing. Okay, we're going to try this one more time. Uh-huh. Mary Kriya. Thank you. <laughs> Mary Kriya. I got it right on the, I got it right on the beginning. Yes, you did, because you're reading, because uh, you're lovely, your lovely cohort. Oh, yeah. yeah. AJ makes makes me stay so, on point. Thank you. Uh, I, I'd love to thank my uh, my guest, Mary Kriya, <laughs> coming on. Uh, check out her band, Remains, of course. And uh, you know what? We didn't get to that video we had of you doing the kiss night. You know, I'll play you off with the, uh, we got time. <laughs> you won't play me off? I'll play Ooh. off with the, uh, well, well, yeah, or check the, yeah, you'll play not a off, virgin. Right? Not a virgin. <laughs> ah. So here's some uh, going blind. Uh, Stoney you Curtis, did. you're amazing. Uh, yeah, Stoney. And uh, we did the uh, kiss night over at Vamped. Uh, thanks, Stoney, for setting that kind of stuff up. And it, uh, everything goes to a uh, great cause. They set up the charity and everything like that. And uh, here is Mary doing going blind. This has been To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Take it easy. <laughs> So hot. <laughs>
Hey everyone, thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.